I still believe skinwalkers exist among the Navajo, down by the res. I'm a third generation Navajo, so I've heard all about these types of creatures from my great grandparents, actually. They used to sit around the fire and tell us all sorts of skinwalker stories back when we were little. They always said it was important that we learn about them. They're still around as far as the res is concerned. My first encounter ever took place at night. I was asleep in my room with the shades wide open. It was pitch black outside. I had just gone to bed not too long before, when suddenly, I heard this loud scream coming from far from the distance. It made me feel chills go up my spine. To describe it, it was like somebody being tortured. And what's more terrifying is it was a scream coming right outside my bedroom window. I was paralyzed with fear, and I remember I couldn't move a muscle. But it wasn't until that moment did I realize just how dark the room really was. Even though there were some streetlights shining into my room from outside, I could still hear movement coming towards my house. Something big. Fear continued to grow inside me as something approached. The movement ceased, and that's when I began to hear loud thumping around walking on the porch. I heard this big bang against my front door. That's when I knew something had gotten into the house. It, in doing so, knocked over a small table where I'd always keep mail and keys on. This was located right outside my room. Now I still could not move, and I got the feeling that whatever this thing was, it wanted me to know it was there. The thumping sound began coming towards my bedroom door, located across from my bed, then suddenly stopped once again. Then, I heard a very loud bang on the door right behind me on the wall. When I looked back, there was nothing. I was terrified at this point. The thumping started walking back towards the front door right behind my bed. That's when I heard the movement towards my bedroom window start again. The whole time, I couldn't move, even though I wanted to get out of there so badly. It felt like an eternity before the knocking really started. Right at that moment, I got the feeling like whatever this thing was, it wanted me to feel the fear of not being able to move, feeling trapped. Then, I heard another loud bang on the window, as though something had jumped hard against it. And to my horror, I realized there were multiple of these things, not just one. While all this was happening, I was terrified to death, frozen, then, I heard more thumping, walking away from my bedroom and outside. That's the one the moment where I heard everything just suddenly stop. It was an incredible feeling of relief. I got up out of my bed, turned on my bedroom light, expecting to see something in the room, but there was nothing there. I felt this sense of relief that whatever it was had finally left, but suddenly... I heard loud scratching noises coming from outside the window, right behind me, where it had just been standing. I turned around towards my window. That's when I could see something trying to break in. The window itself was shaking, as if something was trying to stick its hands in. Something from outside. That's when I began to hear this voice, calling my name, in this almost low whisper raspy noise. It sounded like a man's voice, but the tone was distorted and wrong. I couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from, even though it sounded like it was coming from this thing. It also sounded like it was coming from in my room and inside the house at the same time. I got up out of my bed, running out of the room. Even though I had heard one of these things out there, and I had no idea what I would meet, I ran out of the room running to my sister's room, not skipping a beat. Now, as I'm doing this, the thumping sound begins to walk towards my sister's door, where I thought the noise was outside of. Something began pounding its fist against the wall of the trailer, or the house right outside the hallway, and her bedroom. That's when I heard more thumping on the other side of the house as well. 
we were being invaded. I was expecting to see something when I opened my sister's room, but there was nothing. Now, the sound had stopped as soon as I had entered the room, although I could hear the things walking along outside the trailer. I ran to her window, looking outside the screen, and I could see one of these things walking right outside along our window, still tapping its hand along the wall, and I saw a couple more of them joining. After that night, we had never heard or seen anything else like that again. That was easily the most terrifying memory I have. Nothing happened after that until a year or so later after I had just gotten married, moving in with my husband. We had just bought our first house and we were settling in when we began to hear strange noises from all parts of the house, and even sometimes upstairs. We'd hear things like footsteps, moving furniture, things being knocked over on a regular basis. My husband is an atheist, so he doesn't believe anything supernatural could be going on. Assumed I was just hearing things. One day, as we're both sitting and talking in the living room that my husband built, there was this loud bang coming from upstairs. It sounded like somebody dropped a large metal vase. I went up to see what it was while my husband stayed downstairs. I got up to the top of the stairs and nothing was there. So I turned around to go back down. And as I did, this loud crash occurred just outside our house. Both my husband and I run down and we look outside. But are unsuccessful in seeing anything. The next night, my husband was talking on the phone in our living room while I was upstairs cleaning the bathroom when we all heard an audible knock on the front door. The only problem is that nobody had knocked. My husband heard it clearly, so it's not like one of us was crazy. We both walk over to the door, expecting somebody to be standing there, but nothing. Another night, my husband went upstairs to take a nap while I stayed downstairs to watch TV. He's going up the stairs, looks back at me, and says, I love you, goes upstairs into our bedroom, and begins to take a nap. After a short amount of time, I heard him calling my name in an urgent tone of voice. My husband is pretty much never urgent, so I knew something was wrong. He gets up there and he's wide-eyed. He said that he was laying there, and he looked over and saw me come in the room and stand at the front of the bed. Apparently, I had black eyes and a distorted face, and my skin looked dead. That's when he began screaming and urgently asking for me. And after that, this fake me vanished in the air. We didn't know what to make of these experiences. At first, I would just assume it was a poltergeist, but something more is here. After a while, we got used to these strange sounds coming from our house and stuff being knocked over. I'm beginning to think there's an angry skinwalker spirit that is following me and has attached itself to me. What's your take on all of this? Even though I grew up Navajo, I never participated in much of our culture, rituals, or religions. I've always kind of just done my own thing, but now I feel like I've somehow made myself a target do you know how to get rid of something like this without it hurting somebody? I have a baby now. I don't want anything messing with her. Thank you for your time. Skinwalkers, I believe, have been on this earth in one form or another for many, many years. Skinwalkers, as you know, are evil beings that take the form of a man or an animal. They are believed to be able to shapeshift into other creatures, like wolves or coyotes. They possess powers beyond those of normal men and animals, including the abilities to run at speeds greater than a normal man. Skinwalkers are believed to cause mischief, sickness, and death amongst their victims. In order to become one, one must go through an initiation ritual that requires great strength and determination the first test is to kill the person who taught you how to perform the ritual. The next test is to kill your close family members, sometimes including but not limited to parents and siblings. I firmly suspect that my grandfather, 
now passed, was indeed a Navajo witch, a skinwalker. My grandmother would tell me all sorts of terrifying stories. Fortunately for me, he passed before I was born, and he died of an unknown illness. But I heard from family and my grandmother that he was a very wicked man. Abusive, cruel, sadistic. My grandmother explained to me that he ultimately loved pain, giving and taking. She believes that's probably one of the biggest factors why he got involved in black magic and shapeshifting. He would often leave at night, be gone for days, come back with pelts dirty, covered in filth and animal blood, doing and acting crazy ways. One time, my grandmother told me he had apparently killed off several livestock and eaten them. He had been shot at by farmers and even nearly killed. The man was reckless, dangerous, and a threat to our family. I can't help but wonder if the way he died was as mysterious as everybody says, or maybe the black magic he so practiced ended up ending his life. Maybe somebody took him out. I'll never know. But... I guess in some twisted sense, I'm glad I was never around to actually meet him. This is my story. It was around 7pm. I was 16. I had a bag of M&Ms in my hand, walking the two miles to the store that was here on the reservation. The store was only around a mile from my house, well, at least the point I was in my walk. It was dark and there were no streetlights on this road, which I guess is fairly common. I began walking back home after I got to the store and got more snacks and a Mountain Dew. I began walking when I noticed something moving towards me, only about a hundred feet away. I thought to myself, maybe it's a dog, but this thing kept getting closer, and that's when I realized it was not a normal animal. It was this tall, skinny man walking on two legs like normal, but it looked more like a dog. At this point, I thought about running, but I could tell it was a creature and not a man. This thing had really long arms, like a monkey. By the time this creature got around me and looked at me as it came, it stopped. Its eyes were pitch black and pupils, looking like that of a snake. I was in total shock and I ran as fast as I could. This thing or person did not follow me. I told my mother and brother about what I saw. They didn't believe me. As I got older, I began to tell more people about it, but still, nobody believed my story. Around two years ago, I told my boss at work who is full-blooded Navajo. He is the only one, other than my other family who believed me. I told him that I would not mind if he wanted me to talk about it. He did, said that it was what he would call a skinwalker. Since then, we become good friends outside of work and discuss paranormal things often. Skinwalkers, I learned, are shape-shifting beings. They are generally all around the reservation and act as guardians, although I'm not too sure on that last part. They feed on fear and have been known to get inside people's homes at night. How terrifying. I have never experienced seeing a skinwalker again, but I firmly now believe they exist after seeing one with my own eyes. My skinwalker encounter story happened on the Navajo Res. I was living there at the time of my encounter, and it terrified me so much I had to leave. It's a very scary situation, not for people with weak hearts or feeble minds. As you know, I'm from Alaska originally and have lived most of my life there until I moved down south to Arizona. That's where I met my wife. She's actually part Navajo and has lots of family up there on the res in the northern section of New Mexico. We took a liking to it and at the time moved up there, just outside of Farmington, New Mexico. For six months or more, everything was just fine moving into our new home. But then things began changing. It all began with some weird sightings of coyotes. I thought nothing much of it at the time, but 
as things continued to progress, more and more strange happenings were appearing everywhere. When my wife and I would go into the backyard, we'd see hairs hanging in the trees, feathers lying around everywhere, and these weird-looking paw prints left behind. These things alone were not so strange or necessarily frightening, but what really got me freaked out was one night, while my wife and I were sleeping, I woke up at about three in the morning and to see this person standing over our bed, dressed in a black robe. This person turned around, staring right at me for a few seconds, then vanishing into thin air. It looked like a dead Native American, with paint on his face. After that, I began checking everything from outside before going inside, to bed, making sure nobody was anywhere. My wife and I were terrified by this sighting, but figured it was just a ghost, or something. Now, Fast forward in the late fall of 2007, right after this thing appeared in our bedroom, just as it began getting dark, a lot of strange things began happening in the house. Like our Jack Russell Terrier got really sick with something it had never had before, and then died while we were at work one day. The house would always be freezing cold, even when we turned it up the heat to 80 plus degrees. All of our food would go bad, Worms would be crawling in and out of it. It was disgusting. It's like we were plagued by some sort of poltergeist. We heard this constant tapping on the front door every night for about two weeks straight. Then all of a sudden, it stopped. That made me feel relieved. I thought whoever or whatever had finally left us alone so I can get back to some sort of normal routine. We were sitting in our living room with my wife and I both see this coyote walking up to the back porch, stopping for a second or two, then walking away, back towards a large ravine. It was unusually large for a coyote, twice as big, kind of like a large wolf, with black fur mixed in. The thing that made me want to freak was I saw this animal's eyes. They were human-like. I still have nightmares thinking about that night. Ultimately, I really have no idea how to pinpoint down to the poltergeist I saw and this coyote. I'm looking for opinions here, even though I'm pretty convinced that this was a skinwalker. Both of them were. One was in ghost form, and the other was in shapeshifted form. Obviously, as I already stated, that was more than enough for us, and shortly thereafter, we moved out of there. So, what do you think it was? I'm pretty convinced it was a skinwalker, both times. Hi. Back in 2013, I had a strange encounter with something I can only describe as some kind of skinwalker. For the sake of this story, we're just going to call it an anomaly. It all started one evening, while my family and I were heading to visit Area 51 in Nevada. We were having fun on our road trip. Then, we felt this weird sensation, like someone was watching me, but nobody else seemed to notice anything. As soon as that happened though, everything changed. The desert started to get really dark. The sky went all weird, almost like the sun was night. It was very cold and all I could see was what looked like shadows coming closer to the car we were in. As soon as they got really close, it seemed like time stopped for a second, and everything froze. This is where things got even more strange. Creatures came out of nowhere, out of the darkness, running up to our car, pressing their faces against the window, making everybody scream. The car was stopped to a halt. There was no indication of what these things were, or any specific characteristic about them. They all just looked ugly, distorted, and weird. The only other word I can use to describe them is emotionless. They didn't even seem alive. Have you ever seen Silence of the Lambs? You would probably know what I'm talking about when I use the term emotionless. After some time, we were all so terrified, I told my wife to slam on it, and she flew down the road. There were more of them coming after our car with this unusually dark night. That's when everything began clearing up, and just like that, it was back to evening time. 
everything was gone, and we were all freaking out, screaming, wondering what had just happened. I don't know. A few weeks go by, though, and I discovered yet another anomaly. This time, up in Ohio with a cousin, who had also witnessed something similar when she was starting to drive, right before the same thing happened. Oh, quick note. My cousin told me about how her experiences are different than mine. She said their faces were visible, as if anything wasn't solid was there. As far as when I saw them in Nevada, my cousin claims that she saw more of them, coming down the mountainside. She said they were in front of her car and not just around them. The only thing I can think of is that we either had a mass hallucination, which I don't believe we did, or something paranormal from another realm or interdimensional attacked us or wanted to get us. Me as a family have never experienced anything so terrifying in our lives. How would you even describe the situation or experience to anybody without people giving you a look like they don't believe you? On a back road at night here in Nevada, I saw something I can't explain. I'll start this story off. I'm pretty open-minded. Yes, I believe in God, but I don't really like talking about my sighting on purpose. See, me and two other friends randomly decided to go out one night. So we're driving around. We went down a back road that we had never been out there before. We drove for a while. It was dead silent. Then, right as we passed an old rundown house with a white trailer behind it, Something crossed the road, right in front of us. It moved incredibly fast across the road, at what seemed like ten feet in front of our headlights. It was very strange. You could see a human shape very clearly move quickly from left to right. Not running, but almost more of a jumping kind of motion over the ditch next to the road. Before we saw this thing, I was very skeptical about the existence of skinwalkers, we were all kind of worried to turn around. You never know what could be back there. So, we drove a mile or two down the road and were still pretty freaked out, but trying not to think too much about it. A few minutes later, and we go into a curve and slow down. That's when we see something on the other side of the road, from left to right, almost at the same place where we first spotted, well, whatever that thing was that we saw. As gross as this thing looked, it reminded me of some sort of giant rat that walked upright. I don't know. What killed the thought is the fact that we had all seen it well in our minds and will almost never forget it. It kind of held its arms below its knees, like how a primate would walk. When we saw this thing a second time, it stopped for a solid three seconds, then bolted back in the direction that it came from, which made us feel better about driving off and not turning around just to see if something was behind us. Now, we still don't know exactly what these things were, but my friends and I have come up with some pretty good theories. My first theory is that they are outcasts from the Navajo tribe who have gone mad and now are on a hunt to do revenge killing of some sort. Or another theory could be that they are born and bred on the reservation. These skinwalkers can change form from anything to a human deer, coyote, etc. So, this is mine and my friend's experience with something unexplainable. I'll say this. Never go out at night, Nevada or alone anywhere for that matter. Keep your eyes peeled and just because you don't believe doesn't mean it's not real. I was a senior in school in 2018 and we did a project about spiritual... I was a senior in my high school back in 2018. I was fortunate enough to do a project about spiritual creatures living in different places around the globe, all over the world. I'm doing as much research as I can concerning skinwalkers, so if anybody has any knowledge about it, please post a comment below, let me know what you think. Anyway, there's an old Navajo legend that has been passed down for generations it tells of a race of creatures that can shapeshift into anything they want or need to be in order to get whatever it is they are after. Shapeshifting was seen as the ultimate achievement one can make, 
Only people who possessed specific traits of magic could do this. They would wear animal skins and pelts, and they could become whatever creature their hearts desired in hoping and avoiding detection from other magics who may cause them harm or reveal them if discovered. This way of life went unnoticed by non-magical humans until one day, two young boys noticed something odd while out hunting with their father. When drifting back on the winds, they could hear the sounds of strange animals and odd hissing noises. One boy became curious. His father knew this, and rather than answer or investigate, he told them he was too close to chase such old things. These young boys decided they needed to see what these noises were. They followed the sound down a small hill until they themselves came face to face with the skinwalker. One man, whom we'll call Russell, claimed to have encountered one of these creatures himself while driving late at night through some rural areas. He declared that it looked like an older Navajo woman wearing traditional clothing. As Russell approached her on the deserted road, she began walking toward him, and as she walked, her appearance changed that from an old woman into something much more sinister. If Russ at all thought that would have been the end of it, he was wrong. As she changed into this new form, all sorts of things began flying from her body all around his car. It was almost like a Dracula thing, where her body dematerialized into bats. After trying to escape, Russ finally outran the creature, who was in hot pursuit for most of the time. She had transformed into this hideous thing, running after his car. Although after a while, when he looked back, he could not see her anywhere, even though there was nothing that could have prevented his vision. Again, 1995, another family living near Farmington, New Mexico, reported seeing several skinwalkers at the front of their house. The rest of the story goes as follows. The mother and father had just awakened after hearing something outside their home, right around midnight. They both noticed something walking on two legs, but realized it was not a man. They weren't sure what it was. It was walking up and down, and had a very human shape. They were then able to see the face. It had long black hair, and a face kind of like a coyote. The dad quickly went to the door, grabbing his gun. The mother began screaming, and that's when they saw multiples of these things come towards the door very fast, trying to almost attack the father and break into the house. There's just story after story of these creatures out there, and I don't believe for a second any of this is just a figment of our imagination. Something is going on. I was born and raised on a reservation in Nevada. This is very true and very terrifying at times. Years ago, my mother told me that when she was little, her brother had told her to go play in the other room, so she did. Apparently, she had seen the spirit of a coyote with her mother outside. She was told later on that that was just the spirit of her grandmother who had passed away years before. She had asked her brother how he knew about this and he said that nobody told him. Years later, the mother told stories about seeing strange spirits lurking around the house at night under the light of a full moon. I was able to ask other family members if they see these strange spirits too. All of them said yes. We have many mediums, clairvoyants, and psychics in our family, or so I'm told. I'll also never forget the one time I was riding around in town with my mother we took a shortcut through some desert. As we were driving through, there was no trail, but we had taken this road many times. We were stopped, and I look off to the right and see these two coyotes coming towards us. All of a sudden, now they take off running towards us. My mom floors it, and they stand up on two legs running after our truck. She said that she could hear their claws on the side of the road as they're flying at the truck. Then all of a sudden, just as soon as they had appeared, they completely disappeared into thin air. Even though I haven't seen a skinwalker with my own eyes, yet I know some of these are crazy stories. I believe that I'm seeing skinwalker spirits. I'm not sure what they are. 
My skinwalker encounter story happened on the Navajo Res. I was living there at the time of my encounter, and it terrified me so much I had to leave. It's a very scary situation, not for people with weak hearts or feeble minds. As you know, I'm from Alaska originally and have lived most of my life there until I moved down south to Arizona. That's where I met my wife. She's actually part Navajo and has lots of family up there on the res in the northern section of New Mexico. We took a liking to it and at the time moved up there just outside of Farmington, New Mexico. For six months or more, everything was just fine moving into our new home. But then things began changing. It all began with some weird sightings of coyotes. I thought nothing much of it at the time, but as things continued to progress, more and more strange happenings were appearing everywhere. When my wife and I would go into the backyard, we'd see hairs hanging in the trees, feathers lying around everywhere, and these weird-looking paw prints left behind. These things alone were not so strange or necessarily frightening, but what really got me freaked out was one night, while my wife and I were sleeping, I woke up at about three in the morning and to see this person standing over our bed, dressed in a black robe. This person turned around, staring right at me for a few seconds, then vanishing into thin air. It looked like a dead Native American, with paint on his face. After that, I began checking everything from outside before going inside, to bed, making sure nobody was anywhere. My wife and I were terrified by this sighting, but figured it was just a ghost, or something. Now, fast forward in the late fall of 2007, right after this thing appeared in our bedroom, just as it began getting dark. A lot of strange things began happening in the house. Like our Jack Russell Terrier got really sick with something it had never had before, and then died while we were at work one day. The house would always be freezing cold, even when we turned it up the heat to 80 plus degrees. All of our food would go bad. Worms would be crawling in and out of it. It was disgusting. It's like we were plagued by some sort of poltergeist. We heard this constant tapping on the front door every night for about two weeks straight. Then all of a sudden, it stopped. That made me feel relieved. I thought whoever or whatever had finally left us alone so I can get back to some sort of normal routine. We were sitting in our living room with my wife and I both see this coyote walking up to the back porch, stopping for a second or two, then walking away back towards a large ravine. It was unusually large for a coyote, twice as big, kind of like a large wolf with black fur mixed in. The thing that made me want to freak was I saw this animal's eyes. They were human-like. I still have nightmares thinking about that night. Ultimately, I really have no idea how to pinpoint down to the poltergeist I saw and this coyote. I'm looking for opinions here. Even though I'm pretty convinced that this was a skinwalker, both of them were. One was in ghost form, and the other was in shapeshifted form. Obviously, as I already stated, that was more than enough for us, and shortly thereafter, we moved out of there. So, what do you think it was? I'm pretty convinced it was a skinwalker, both times. Hi. Back in 2013, I had a strange encounter with something I can only describe as some kind of skinwalker. For the sake of this story, we're just going to call it an anomaly. It all started one evening, while my family and I were heading to visit Area 51 in Nevada. We were having fun on our road trip. Then, we felt this weird sensation, like someone was watching me, but nobody else seemed to notice anything. As soon as that happened though, everything changed. The desert started to get really dark. The sky went all weird, almost like the sun was night. It was very cold and all I could see was what looked like shadows coming closer to the car we were in. As soon as they got really close, it seemed like time stopped for a second and everything froze. This is where things got even more strange. Creatures came out of nowhere 
out of the darkness, running up to her car, pressing their faces against the window, making everybody scream. The car was stopped to a halt. There was no indication of what these things were, or any specific characteristic about them. They all just looked ugly, distorted, and weird. The only other word I can use to describe them is emotionless. They didn't even seem alive. Have you ever seen Silence of the Lambs? You would probably know what I'm talking about when I use the term emotionless. After some time, we were all so terrified. I told my wife to slam on it, and she flew down the road. There were more of them coming after our car with this unusually dark night. That's when everything began clearing up. And just like that, it was back to evening time. Everything was gone, and we were all freaking out, screaming, wondering what had just happened. I don't know. A few weeks go by, though, and I discovered yet another anomaly. This time, up in Ohio with a cousin, who had also witnessed something similar when she was starting to drive, right before the same thing happened. Oh, quick note. My cousin told me about how her experiences are different than mine. She said their faces were visible, as if anything wasn't solid was there. As far as when I saw them in Nevada, my cousin claims that she saw more of them, coming down the mountainside. She said they were in front of her car and not just around them. The only thing I can think of is that we either had a mass hallucination, which I don't believe we did, or something paranormal from another realm or interdimensional attacked us or wanted to get us. Me as a family have never experienced anything so terrifying in our lives. How would you even describe the situation or experience to anybody without people giving you a look like they don't believe you? On a back road at night here in Nevada, I saw something I can't explain. I'll start this story off. I'm pretty open-minded. Yes, I believe in God, but I don't really like talking about my sighting on purpose. See, me and two other friends randomly decided to go out one night. So we're driving around. We went down a back road that we had never been out there before. We drove for a while. It was dead silent. Then, right as we passed an old rundown house with a white trailer behind it, something crossed the road right in front of us. It moved incredibly fast across the road at what seemed like 10 feet in front of our headlights. It was very strange. You could see a human shape very clearly move quickly from left to right. Not running, but almost more of a jumping kind of motion over the ditch next to the road. Before we saw this thing, I was very skeptical about the existence of skinwalkers. We were all kind of worried to turn around. You never know what could be back there. So, we drove a mile or two down the road and were still pretty freaked out, but trying not to think too much about it. A few minutes later, and we go into a curve and slow down. That's when we see something on the other side of the road, from left to right, almost at the same place where we first spotted, well, whatever that thing was that we saw. As gross as this thing looked, it reminded me of some sort of giant rat that walked upright. I don't know. What killed the thought is the fact that we had all seen it well in our minds and will almost never forget it. It kind of held its arms below its knees, like how a primate would walk. When we saw this thing a second time, it stopped for a solid three seconds, then bolted back in the direction that it came from, which made us feel better about driving off and not turning around, just to see if something was behind us. Now, we still don't know exactly what these things were, but my friends and I have come up with some pretty good theories. My first theory is that they are outcasts from the Navajo tribe who have gone mad and now are on a hunt to do revenge killing of some sort. Or another theory could be that they are born and bred on the reservation. These skinwalkers can change form from anything to a human, deer, coyote, etc., so, this is mine and my friend's experience with something unexplainable. I'll say this. Never go out at night, Nevada or alone anywhere for that matter. 
Keep your eyes peeled and just because you don't believe doesn't mean it's not real. I was a senior in school in 2018 and we did a project about spiritual... I was a senior in my high school back in 2018. I was fortunate enough to do a project about spiritual creatures living in different places around the globe, all over the world. I'm doing as much research as I can concerning skinwalkers, so if anybody has any knowledge about it, please post a comment below let me know what you think. Anyway, there's an old Navajo legend that has been passed down for generations. It tells of a race of creatures that can shapeshift into anything they want or need to be in order to get whatever it is they are after. Shapeshifting was seen as the ultimate achievement one could make. Only people who possessed specific traits of magic could do this. And they would wear animal skins and pelts, and they could become whatever creature their hearts desired in hoping and avoiding detection from other magics who may cause them harm or reveal them if discovered. This way of life went unnoticed by non-magical humans until one day, two young boys noticed something odd while out hunting with their father. When drifting back on the winds, they could hear the sounds of strange animals and odd hissing noises. One boy became curious. His father knew this, and rather than answer or investigate, he told them he was too close to chase such old things. These young boys decided they needed to see what these noises were. They followed the sound down a small hill until they themselves came face to face with the skinwalker. One man, whom we'll call Russell, claimed to have encountered one of these creatures himself while driving late at night through some rural areas. He declared that it looked like an older Navajo woman wearing traditional clothing. As Russell approached her on the deserted road, she began walking toward him, and as she walked, her appearance changed that from an old woman into something much more sinister. If Russ at all thought that would have been the end of it, he was wrong. As she changed into this new form, all sorts of things began flying from her body all around his car. It was almost like a Dracula thing, where her body dematerialized into bats. After trying to escape, Russ finally outran the creature, who was in hot pursuit for most of the time. She had transformed into this hideous thing, running after his car. Although after a while, when he looked back, he could not see her anywhere, even though there was nothing that could have prevented his vision. Again, 1995, another family living near Farmington, New Mexico, reported seeing several skinwalkers at the front of their house. The rest of the story goes as follows. The mother and father had just awakened after hearing something outside their home, right around midnight. They both noticed something walking on two legs, but realized it was not a man. They weren't sure what it was. It was walking up and down, and had a very human shape. They were then able to see the face. It had long black hair, and a face kind of like a coyote. The dad quickly went to the door, grabbing his gun. The mother began screaming, and that's when they saw multiples of these things come towards the door very fast trying to almost attack the father and break into the house. There's just story after story of these creatures out there, and I don't believe for a second any of this is just a figment of our imagination. Something is going on. I was born and raised on a reservation in Nevada. This is very true and very terrifying at times. Years ago, my mother told me that when she was little, her brother had told her to go play in the other room, so she did. Apparently, she had seen the spirit of a coyote with her mother outside. She was told later on that that was just the spirit of her grandmother who had passed away years before. She had asked her brother how he knew about this, and he said that nobody told him. Years later, the mother told stories about seeing strange spirits lurking around the house at night under the light of a full moon. I was able to ask other family members if they see these strange spirits too. All of them said yes. We have many mediums, clairvoyants, and psychics in our family, or so I'm told. 
I'll also never forget the one time I was riding around in town with my mother. We took a shortcut through some desert. As we were driving through, there's no trail, but we had taken this road many times. We were stopped, and I look off to the right and see these two coyotes coming towards us. All of a sudden, now they take off running towards us. My mom floors it, and they stand up on two legs running after our truck. She said that she could hear their claws on the side of the road as they're flying at the truck. Then all of a sudden, just as soon as they had appeared, they completely disappeared into thin air. Even though I haven't seen a skinwalker with my own eyes, yet I know some of these are crazy stories. I believe that I'm seeing skinwalker spirits. I'm not sure what they are. I've been reading up on the subject of skinwalkers now for many years. I'm still not really sure what to believe, but it's given me material for many campfire tales. One story that is true, and happened just recently actually, is that an old ranch hand was working by himself when he saw this strange being come out of some trees near an old tool shack. The person shapeshifted into a coyote, then back again to a human form as it came towards. He went inside and locked up. Hours later, the boss man came back in his truck with a friend who was some kind of Native American shaman or something. They wanted to know if he'd seen anything strange. Hours earlier, they had been out in the hills searching for some missing cattle and had found dozens of mutilated ones with strange symbols carved into them. That's when they suspected that it could be some sort of witch doing these killings. The boss told me after hearing that story that he does believe there are good Native American witches out there who help fight these bad witches, but it has to be a personal mission from within their hearts to do something like that. The one commonality among all these stories about skinwalkers is how they all state just how powerful they are. It seems impossible at times and makes you wonder how they could even be real. I know it's hard to believe, but the stories are coming from all over the world. So something has to be going on that cannot be explained by logic and reasoning alone. From the sounds of things, these beings are deeply embedded into a Native American culture as we speak. I have a ranch in Maverick County, Texas. It's very remote, and quite frankly, I'm not sure how I ended up with it. But the deed is in my name, so here I am. Let's just say it occurred from a little family mishap. Last year was the first time I'd ever actually been down there. Prior to that, no one had ever lived on the land for years, and it was very overgrown. Lots of trees and brush and God knows what else. But you couldn't see any of that from a satellite. I mean, we're talking dense vegetation. I know that's a weird analogy, but I'm just trying to iterate how dense the vegetation was. Anyway, before finally going out there myself, I had spent a lot of time talking to people who knew about the property, some of whom were pretty well versed in local folklore. The long and short of it is, I don't know what to expect. I figured it would be a lot of work, but if the rumors I'd heard were true, then the payoff could be worth it. And they were. There is plenty of open pasture, readily available for grazing and watering. The fences weren't in good shape, but some time and money could easily fix that. There were also dozens of little feeder streams that led down into the main creek, which crosses the property. Plenty of water for animals. It's perfect. The whole place looks like somebody just plopped down a large chunk of land and forgot to tell anybody about it. One guy even told me he thought at one point, during its time as an isolated ranch, locals would sneak out there at night and drive their cattle across it, on the way into Maverick County from Star County. Remember, I'm talking about a place that was completely overgrown. Nobody would have been able to see them doing it. I've got several hundred acres fenced off for grazing, but in the middle of my land is this one little spot which has been left untouched by animals or humans. There's no grass or low-lying plants of any kind, just hard stone and dirt. It's an area that measures maybe 15 feet across at its widest point, and is shaped like a perfect square. As soon as I saw that weird patch of ground, when I first went down there last year, I knew immediately what it was. 
And I'm not talking about an old well or anything like that. This is much older than that. It's what the locals call a skinwalker place. The first time I set foot on my land was in late August of last year. It took me almost three months to get back down there. Again, I just started working a new job at a cattle ranch, which is almost an hour away from the property. In October, after finally getting around to checking out my land with some contractors and local guys who had experienced building fences and such, we built a small house on top of one of the hills overlooking both pastures, where we could stay while doing work. Before I had the place fenced off, I used to see lots of deer. We also fixed up some of the fence and the gate. But other than that, the only thing we really did was cut down all the overgrown brush and trees where we planned on building a house. I left with nothing but good things to say. It's not very densely populated, especially when you're out between there. It's one of the most beautiful places, as if you don't mind being away from civilization. The people out there are very friendly. It's a great place to kick back, getting away from it all, and do some hunting or fishing if that's your thing which is what I was really after when I bought the land there in the first place. A quiet place on the beaten path where you can go to chill, relax, without having to deal with people constantly coming up to you or acting like they own you. The weather out there during the summertime is absolutely gorgeous. During my first trip down, it was inevitable that I'd have to go and visit. Weird things around the ranch began to happen, weird symbols being etched into the ground strange noises, and weird figures moving about. I normally don't believe in the paranormal, but I can't exactly explain what it was that I was seeing or experiencing. After a couple of days down there, a few of the workers I had fixing and patching up the fence were too afraid. They stopped altogether and left. I never saw some of those guys again. I decided to rough it out and try to get more men up on the ranch, but same thing. They reported seeing strange figures and weird noises, and that it spooked them so badly that they refused to work there any longer. I was only able to stay there for so long, before ultimately having to go back home. After I flew back home, I had contracted a separate team from out of state to show up there and fix the property up while I was back home in a different state. I kept getting phone calls, same thing. Workers would get up and leave during the middle of the day and night due to the same complaints as the other previous men. Then I get a very interesting phone call. This is where things get strange. The man I could tell was native just from the way he talked. He claimed he was a medicine man from one of the local tribes. And forgive me because I can't remember the tribe in which he was a part of. But he said to me that he was a medicine man and that the land I owned which he got my credentials and information from some of the men he saw working there, was sacred land, and many of his people had died there long before. He said his people still roamed about and that it's not safe that I have a house being built on it. He told me it would probably be in my best interest to abandon any development and let the property go back. As you could imagine, I was a bit taken aback by this phone call as I wasn't really sure what to believe. But after getting on the internet and doing a little bit of research on Google, I found out that there was some really weird stuff going on with not only that property, but that whole sector of land. I'm a little bit short on time right now, so I'll have to write you into this as a part two, if you don't mind. But for the time being, if you have any questions or comments about what's going on, I would love to hear them. I still own the property as of now, of August of 2021, and I'm debating whether or not to sell it or give it away to one of my other family members. I don't know if I want to deal with this, but anyway, like I said, I'll write into you part two about more of the strange things that have been happening there. Ever since I was a small boy, I would often go hunting with my father outside of New Orleans in the swamps. One night, we were looking for game when my father found an alligator that began to appear. I couldn't tell you if alligator hunting was in any way illegal, but my dad took a shot at it, killing it right there in the spot, shooting it right between the eyes. We went over to see if we could get some meat off of it, when suddenly, from the bushes, this man-sized lizard appeared. Dark in color, 
having big orange eyes reminiscent to that of a cat, and reeking of decaying meat. My father instantly started shaking as he slowly placed down his shotgun. This pterodactyl-looking thing hissed at us and began to move quickly towards us. That's when we realized it was actually moving towards the dead alligator my father had just shot. My father picked up his shotgun, aimed at it, pulling the trigger, but the shotgun jammed. All of a sudden, we heard something behind us, realizing there was more of these things walking the distance towards us. The one in front had now picked up this dead alligator, began to tear its skull open and eating the meat, like brain matter and such, in front of us. We stood there in shock. It kind of reminded me of something that had torn a turtle open, eating the fresh meat. The one behind us gained distance quickly, leaping, knocking my father over. I ran as fast as I could, hoping it wouldn't give chase to me and leave my parents alone. There was blood all over from where this thing had scratched me while leaping over. These things let my father go. I think they were so preoccupied with the dead alligator. My dad came running up behind me while these things stole his kill, disappearing off into the swamp. I don't know what they were, but I sure hope that nobody has to ever experience such a thing again. The weird thing is, this happened in the 1980s, right around the same time that boy from Skateboard Swamp saw that strange reptilian being running after him. I have no idea if they're the same thing or not. During my junior year of high school in Denver, Colorado, I had an encounter with a reptilian being. It was October 12th, 2003. While going to catch the bus for school, something odd happened that would forever change my life. While walking to the bus stop, it was around 7 a.m., when suddenly, this very tall being appears out of the woodline. Quick note, the thick brush in which this figure appeared from has kind of marshes beyond it. So, I see this figure, and I can't quite make out what it is at first, but I realize whatever this figure is has scales, visible scales, and it's walking upright, just like a man would. Curious, but also very creeped out. I ignore it for a moment, try to pull out my phone, which at the time was a Nokia brick phone, only to discover the battery is dead. Upon putting my phone back in my pocket, I decide to see that I'm going to see who this is, assuming it was a person who was thinking they were clever, walking around in some sort of Halloween costume. I figured it was a little early for Halloween, but you never know. Sometimes you get those weirdos walking around. As I get closer, this thing looks like someone's nightmare. Its skin was scalier than I had first thought, and it had these little horns on top of its head and back. Not like probably what you're imagining. Not like ram horns or anything, but these little spikes, I guess if that's how I can describe them. But most impressively were the whites of its eyes. They were like slit pupils, now, I have never been afraid of anything before, but something told me in my gut, I needed to run and now. I started running through the lot behind me, trying to get away from whatever this thing was, when suddenly, a car passes by slowly. This thing didn't even seem to notice me, but turned to get a better look at the passing car. When it did, I noticed that its face was more human than I thought. When I saw its face and got a look more intently, I felt weird, beginning running faster to my house. Now I'm not sure if this being is still there or not. It's been almost 20 years, but by the time I reached my front door, I don't think it was following me anymore. Now, I had heard of weird stuff happening in my neighborhood. Other kids whom I went to school with would always joke about what they would call as the green man supposedly a tall green lizard man who stalked the marshes and woods. I always thought it was ridiculous, and I'm not saying that's what I saw, but I'm going to tell you what happened next. 
So I started to tell my best friends about what I had saw. Some of them believed me, some of them did not. But I think they could see how much it affected me. I mean, hell, I missed that whole day of school. And I wasn't going to dare tell my parents about what I witnessed. They would never believe me. In fact, they probably would have assumed I was on drugs or dropping LSD. The only choice I really had at the time was to share it with a few of my close friends and primarily keeping it to myself until all these years later when I developed an interest in cryptozoology and the paranormal. Thanks to sources like YouTube, which allow everybody and anybody to share their personal encounter stories and experiences. This is what I learned recently, that I am not alone at all. In fact, I'm not crazy, because I battled with that for years, convincing myself that it was just a strong hallucination, or a bad nightmare, or a very vivid nightmare, I should say. Anyway, after hearing and learning everything that I have, and spending copious amount of hours researching and diving deep into my past, I believe that reptilians are real. Maybe not in the traditional sense, where it's humans transforming into reptile creatures, but maybe reptilian cryptids are an actual thing. I stand firm on my stance, primarily because I've seen one with my own eyes. I'm a hobbyist and a paranormal investigator. I wanted to take some time and share with you an encounter story that I've recently come to know from a man in the state of Alabama. This man had an encounter near his home with what he claims was a reptilian that he said was about 10 feet tall. And it had left three claw marks on the hood of his truck in a fierce showdown. It apparently tried to kill the man, but was unsuccessful. He, however, was successful in getting away. What made this the scariest of all is that there were other witnesses to this strange event. The description given by those who saw the same thing as the man were the same. The witnesses were his wife and older son. The man was terrified of what he saw that afternoon. He claimed that this thing climbed right out of the swamps, went right for him. They kind of had a brawl where he shot at this thing multiple times, trying to get it to go away. The man deeply admitted to being terrified of what he saw, and if this thing wanted to kill him, it could have easily done so. This reptilian cryptid, as described by the witness, was around 8 to 10 feet tall, grayish to green scaly skin, shark-like teeth in its mouth, large hands with three claws each, and long protruding spikes all over its back, with a long tail covered in barbs or thorns. Its eyes were red, with yellow like slits for pupils. It looked extremely angry. The thing was supposedly able to climb trees and also walked around on two legs, like a man would, very comfortably. The witness says that the thing had a horrible, sickening smell that emitted from it. You could smell it before it was even showing up. It smelled bad. The mom and son just kept saying how horrible the smell was, and they never want to have another encounter with whatever this was. The witness was so terrified after the incident, he and his family moved away from the area. The family actually now lives in northern Florida with their relatives in order to avoid that property and area altogether. When I spoke to the witness, he claimed there was lots of swampland that surrounded that specific county. Lots of deer, lots of hunting. He said the surrounding county is very rural. A lot of people like to hunt there. He prefers living in northern Florida. He doesn't want another reptilian encounter experience. He doesn't want to be that close to those swamps, especially after his family had their very first and only encounter now, the man also claims that what he saw was not a human in a suit, but something else. Something dark. Something from another world. When they were being attacked, he also admits that he got a look at the creature. The man said that his wife described it exactly the way he did. It was hideous. She was hiding inside, 
afraid of what might happen if she stepped outside or what to do. She said, though, too, she also smelt a foul odor before she ever saw it, and even when she saw it and after it disappeared. Her description of its claws were also identical to the man. She described them as three claws, which resembled retractable knives coming out of each hand. It was also reported making a loud shrieking noise as it approached. She said her husband is lucky that this thing let him get away. If anyone else has had a sighting or an encounter story that you know regarding something like this, I'd appreciate any information you could share with me. Because here, there is something very strange. And if we don't have photographic evidence, at least not yet, we won't be able to prove this thing exists, which we're wanting to do. So if you ever come across some, please don't hesitate to share some with me. Thank you. My sighting happened in June of 2012. My father was undergoing chemo, and I decided to bring him out into the canoe for an afternoon trip. We headed downriver to a secluded spot that we had been on once before. On our way there, my dog started acting funny, sniffing the ground and barking. That's when this large lizard thing began coming out of the trees. I began screaming, pointing at this creature, wondering what we were seeing. My father grabbed our canoe paddles, and I began screaming for him to paddle us away. But this thing kept coming towards us. Now, it was sifting quickly through the water, toward us, like some big water snake. Not swimming, though, more flowing, until it was only about ten feet away from the canoe. Its head and body were above the water line. Then, my dad reached in his pocket for something. I hear a gunshot go off, and a spray of blood shot out of this creature. The sight made me almost vomit. Then, it just sank down under the water. I blacked out after that for some time, in complete and utter terror. The next thing I know, we are at our destination and my father is asking if I'm okay. That's when he tells me what happened. I'm shooting this creature, and then this thing disappearing underneath the water. I had fainted, I was so terrified. My dad explained to me something large had come through us and at us through the water. He wasn't sure what it was. My dad was pale. I mean, I have never seen him like that before. Now, fast forward 15 years later, and my oldest son believes he'd seen a similar creature when he was out in the forest with his own friends. He was rounding up this group of kids when he saw something that looked like a lizard. He said it stared at him for a moment when they all became aware of what he was seeing. The creature darted off. My son, who is now 21, has never told anybody about this until I mentioned my own sighting to him, not knowing if it was the same thing. It's weird because his friends and parents had reported their strange large three-toed tracks around their house at nighttime. They would find these large feces piles as well, large scratches along the house of the trees. I can only suspect it's this thing. It's hanging around here. Look, I don't know if we somehow stumbled upon its territory or what, but I know it's here. My son has also seen it several more times since his initial sighting. The last time was not too long ago. He said this thing is beginning to get to very, very violent. It's been destroying people's property, attacking and killing dogs. I'm still in shock by what we all saw those years ago, and never once did I ever believe in this kind of thing until that day. Now I know for sure it existed and will continue to exist. I know I'm going to be attacked for what I'm saying, but if there's anybody else out there that has seen this thing, let me know. We need some answers. One night, my friend and I were driving through eastern Texas late at night. We were on our way to Austin from Oklahoma. It's a pretty long drive, 700 miles each way. Along the route, we saw what looked like a large man walking along the highway. 
he appeared to be carrying something in his right hand. So we thought he might have been walking back from a, maybe a party or something. But as we got closer, we could tell it wasn't a human, but some sort of person in a reptile suit. But they were about seven feet tall. And the closer we got, and the more our headlights illuminated him or it, something just seemed so off. First off, this was a long stretch of road, with nothing out here. Why would somebody be walking around out here in the middle of the night in a lizard costume? But the closer we got, we could begin to see that the suit or costume this man was supposedly wearing looked very realistic. So I figured I would blow the horn, maybe get his attention. And as soon as I did, I regretted it. I say it because I don't know if it has a gender or if what it was, but it turned to face us. That's when I realized this was not somebody in a costume. This was some failed science experiment or something. And I could tell that whatever was in its hand was part of a dead animal. I couldn't tell what. I want to say maybe a dead fox. This was real and definitely not a human. I am one of those people who believe in these things, but I'm writing this testimony because for some reason, something inside me told me to do so. I don't know if I'm ever going to go back there again. And ever since that experience of August 1st, 2014, I can close my eyes and still see the look on his face at us running away and him holding something which looked like a large animal. Now, before I even got up to him, we were doing about 80 miles an hour. And when we saw him and the headlights off in the distance, we began to slow down. Now, when he turned his face around and looked at us, his eyes were beat red. They looked like they had been lit up by fire. Although it's impossible, there were no lights around. He looked like he wasn't supposed to exist or be real. Like he looked like he walked off a movie set. If I can be real with you, it reminded me of a creature you'd see in one of those 2000s sci-fi movies on the Sci-Fi Channel. Not animatronic, but not in a costume either. Just very realistic. Anyway, on another occasion, my friend and I were sitting around at night, having some drinks and talking about how glad we were to not be driving through the country during this time. Who knows what might be out there lurking, waiting for us. Pretty soon, our conversation turned to more serious matters, like Bigfoot, UFOs, and paranormal, both of which we're all very interested in. All of a sudden, we heard some very loud footsteps, as if somebody was running outside. We both got up, turned off the lights to see if we could see anything, although we couldn't. I feel like from now on, I'll try and be more aware of what's happening. Not just at night, but think about all these things that go down during the day. Sometimes I wonder if they are coming closer to civilization. Or is it me? Or am I the only one who feels this way? One thing is for sure. I'll really try and never let my guard go down again. Because while driving down some empty backcountry road late at night, you'll wake up sometimes with goosebumps, thinking about what might be out there. I know I'll never forget that encounter. I live about 40 minutes away from Syracuse. I had a sighting with this black snake-like creature that was upright like a man, six foot tall, and I saw it running into the woods when I made eye contact with it. About two years prior to this sighting, I saw some red eyes at night off of Buckley Road. Now, these eyes were pretty high up from the ground, and very close together. At the time, I thought it was just eye shine. But after this encounter, I'm thinking it was more than that. Not that it was an eye shine, but more so what it came from. Definitely not a deer, like I may have thought it to be then. I'm sorry there's not a lot to my story, but the being in which I saw was very, very strange. To be honest... I've never shared this story with anybody before, but after listening to all your stories on how other people have seen these similar reptilian creatures, I don't really know if I'm scared anymore. 
It's comforting to know I'm not alone in having these strange sightings. And I'm glad to know that when you see them, it doesn't always mean you're going to get hurt. Somehow this makes me feel safer. I guess thank you for any helpful information you might have. I used to be a resident of Texas, actually. And although I'm currently in Colorado, I still have family down there. But that's not the part that concerns me. So let's go over with what does. My sister was studying at the university in Texas, and she started telling me about strange things going on at where she has lived. She's told me stories about finding large clawed footprints out in her yard and pastures, seeing strange lights at night through her windows. Especially since she kind of lives out in the country, there's no street lights or nothing, and the weird lights kind of come and go. She's not a believer in the paranormal or UFOs, so she's pretty unconvinced, but does find the sightings and lights very strange. I've dismissed these claims as nothing more than paranoia at the time, or maybe an overactive imagination. Until one time, visiting my parents, who are actually in Cedar Hill. This was in 2014, by the way. I had heard noises outside that sounded somewhat like growls at first, but as the night went on, I realized they were far too deep to be anything other than something maybe like a bear. The prints were the same prints my sister had been seeing. They looked wrong. I remember my father grabbing his flashlight, heading out to see what was making these noises, while my mother and I stayed put inside. I heard him go out there, and kind of mumbling to himself for a minute. Then it went quiet. Then he runs back in, and he describes to us seeing a creature around 5'10", covered from head to toe in dark black to green scales, looking almost like the reflection of moonlight. It had a very large muscular build, three sharp claws in each hand, and a mouth full of fangs. My dad was so pale. The thing apparently snarled at him and retreated back into the tree line. My dad described it like he caught it doing something, and it seemed startled. So who knows what that's all about? But I've never seen him so scared out of his mind before in my life. He told me he has no idea what that thing was, and only remembers it making a horrible, high-pitched scream before disappearing. We came to find out the next day that this creature had been seen on their property in recent days by their neighbors. My parents didn't have a camera system, so we had no way to make that proof. Of course, we didn't find out about the whole neighbor seeing this thing until later. My dad still does not know what it was, or why it would just up and visit his house like that, out of nowhere. I tried to research and look up reptiles native to Texas, which are obviously quite a few, and nothing really fit, except large lizards, such as the monitor lizards, which aren't supposed to be here anyway. So, at least there's that much. But that doesn't even begin to describe what this being looked like. The interesting bit is my father described the strange lizard man creature as having a very human face as he described it. He also made note that it looked in highly intelligent. It gets more strange than that. My sister came across the story of a girl who saw some kind of creature near her home. This was also in Texas back in 2013. She found the story on Facebook, printing out the story to show my father so he'd know that she wasn't just making up her own stories or anything. Of course, her showing him that was before his own sighting, because he didn't believe it at the time. He brought this article over to me, and I got back home. I wasn't sure what to make of it at the time. And my grandmother, who's also from Dallas, but has since moved away now, she told us that she used to see unexplained lights all the time outside of her house, and she lives in Garland. I don't know much about these reptilian entities, but if they really are real, I'd like to know why there's so much activity around Dallas. My grandmother explained to me that she used to see lights outside of her house all the time late at night, and sometimes, when she'd look out the window, there would be this large creature standing there in the street, peering in at her, as if it wanted to come in, but wouldn't. At first, this obviously terrified her, 
until one day she realized that whatever this thing is, it, I guess, wasn't harmful. It just stood there, glowing yellow eyes, with some sort of horrific expression, like it just wanted to scare my grandmother. She got after it. She would cuss at it, open the door and yell it, tell it to go away. It never would. It would just stand there and watch her. At one time, she even called my grandfather who was at work, and he said there was nothing out there with her. Of course, she would keep looking out the window again to see if it had gone away, but no. It would still just stand in the street, like its feet were rooted to the ground while she watched it. And this went on for years, until she finally moved away out of that house. We have no idea what that's all about. Now, when I told my grandmother about what had happened to my sister and us the one night, she got really quiet, asked me not to tell anybody else. People might think we're crazy. After all, we got some of those looks after telling a few friends what had happened. And just last week, I saw more news stories pop up on these lizard men seen outside of Dallas. I did another search online where they described them as having green skin, bulging eyes and whatnot. My sister, upon doing some more research, even saw a YouTube video where some guy apparently got footage of these things, but I don't know about that. Supposedly happened in California. If lizard men are real, what is happening? Is it just because of the increase in population around Dallas, or is there more something sinister happening? And by the way, my father has never shown interest in cryptozoology or the paranormal. But I know he's now terrified. He believes something is stalking this house specifically. I think my sister is starting to open up. He told me he wanted to move away, ASAP. He hasn't slept right since that night, which was a while ago now. And he won't be sleeping any better now that he knows more about these things. As for me, I'm still not 100% sure what I believe. But I try to be open-minded and understand there is something going on. Something more than what I can comprehend or understand. June of 2018 is when my life changed. The time when I had a terrifying encounter, and multiple of them, with what is known as the Dogman. As you may know, there have been countless sightings of it in the last couple years, more than ever before, all over the country including some in my very own home state of Iowa. Its most visible form appears to be that of a large wolf-like creature. The name Dogman was given to this beast due to the way it stands up on its hind legs and walks around like some sort of man-wolf hybrid, as terrifying as that is. I can pretty much remember reading about it that one day online. Several reports were made about sightings being seen near actually where I live and work, including one at a park only two miles away from where my job is. Now, no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't seem to believe that such a creature exists. But then again, no one can prove it isn't either. Of course, all these notions that I had were soon changed back in 2018. Over the next couple of days after the encounter in the barn with this thing, I found myself talking about it to quite almost everybody, friends and family, even complete strangers who I was convinced that would listen. Most of them never thought much of it. They all seemed to have some sort of belief in the paranormal, all except for my wife. The people at work also didn't take me seriously when I told them what had happened out behind our farmhouse due to most already having heard other people make very similar claims over the years. You see, my home in Iowa has been in my family for a very long time. It's pretty much always been in the same spot, as far back as I know. My great-grandparents moved there before anybody else had settled around them, which was about 100 or so years ago. It's been a long time. Now, it's just a big open field behind our house, where we used to have lots of livestock, but no longer, due to this thing killing them, consuming them. That barn is still out there, though. Although it's aged and massive, 
and quite old. We don't use it anymore. It really needs some serious repairs done to it. And, as of the last 18 months, it's just not safe. And nearly collapsing on my horses. Anyway, when it was in use, it was being used for storing livestock, hay, that sort of thing. Even my kids played around in it when they were bored and wanted some fresh air. There were times we had gone out there on the weekends sometimes, hung up a hammock in there for them, and used it as sort of a fort, which they enjoyed doing when it was too wet outside to be playing sports like other parents would do with their children. My son is now 18, but still doesn't have any interest in things he calls playing old man by going out to the barn with his mom and dad, even though that's where we kept our stuff. Anyway, not trying to get too off topic. The first night I encountered this thing in our barn is when I was out cleaning for the night. I heard strange noises coming from our old barn. The noises continued, so I went in and grabbed my flashlight, went inside quite a bit, investigated the strange sounds and where they were coming from. My plan went out the window pretty quickly because that's when things got pretty out of hand. While shutting my light all over, something suddenly snuck up on me real fast from behind, much faster than anything human could ever move, slamming into me in one of the old stalls that had been fixed up with drywall instead of wooden bars like most of them still have. It hurt so bad. I hit my head on the side wall hard enough to make a dent, the pain instantly knocking me out. I blacked out for a couple of seconds from the shock. I woke up in one of the stalls in our barn with my head pounding, realizing what had happened. Something was still on top of me as I regained consciousness, but this time it felt much longer than anything I'd ever seen or felt before. I opened my eyes to see the most horrifying creature staring down at me almost smirking in the most menacing smile I've ever seen in my life, like it wanted to rip me into shreds. You can't even get close to that sort of terror. It had beady amber eyes, holding me down. It got up really close to my face, and I could smell its putrid odor. It almost kind of let out this snort while looking deep into my eyes. Its gaze was penetrating my very soul, you can't even begin to imagine the level of fear that you experience through something like this. It's changed my brain. It's changed my personality. When you come not only that close to death, but to something like this that isn't supposed to exist, it makes you rethink life a lot. It let go of me, throwing me down again and quickly fleeing the barn. I could hear it running off into the forest by the barn before it finally went silent. After trying to pull myself up and convince myself what just happened was actually real, I heard this awful howling noise, multiple noises, coming from the spot this thing had just fled off to. Instantly, I knew there was more of them, and they were coming back. So I mustered up every ounce of strength and courage I could to get out of there. That's just the very first time I encountered this thing. It's gotten more aggressive every time since then. But that was not the end of it, and I'm still dealing with this thing to this day. And so are my neighbors. It's not just me who has seen something like this. Many other people in my town, in fact, have had encounters themselves. Some have been bad, some worse, but some have not. The ones who haven't seem almost relieved by hearing how much this thing gets around. I know what you're thinking. That these claims and stories can't possibly be real. I mean, it's not like we have any physical proof. All we've got is a bunch of photos on Facebook or YouTube videos posted by people who swear they took them in their own home or out in the woods where they live. I want to tell you why we have no proof as of yet. The people posting the videos and images on Facebook are keeping them posted for so long. They're afraid that if they take them down, well, who knows? Maybe it will somehow make whatever this is know that it's actually real. I've spoken with many of these people personally. 
I believe it's just a scare tactic. What really happens when somebody takes an image or a video of something like this down from their Facebook page? That person gets trolled hard by other users, making fun of him or her, telling that person he's crazy, while at the same time harassing him about how scared his friends must be feeling after seeing a photo like that posted. The descriptions given by experts are also frightening because it matches exactly what I've seen. To say they're elusive is pretty correct. They're not afraid, though, to come out in broad daylight. They are a werewolf-like creature, after all. It makes them that much more dangerous than most other types of cryptids. If you do see one during the day, it means they're far more comfortable around humans and looking for food close to home. Listen, at this point, I'm scared for my life. I feel like I'm constantly looking over my shoulder outside while taking care of my things on the farm or even going out to town, doing errands, whatever. This thing has changed me dramatically since that first encounter all those years back. I know that deep down in my soul that they're real, but science will never admit to something like this existing out of a book. Until we get the proof we need, they'll never take it seriously either. I'm not sure how many of these creatures there really are. All I do know is that if you see one and survive an encounter with it, you're better off dead than alive. Your life will never be the same. It will scar you. It will change you. It changes all of us. My neighbor was right when he said that they become far more aggressive all the time. Oh, and one last warning. If you think for a second that these things don't really exist, you gotta... Oh, and one last warning. If you think for a second that these things don't exist, you have another thing coming. Don't ever go out into the woods at night by yourself. If you can't bring somebody else along with you who's willing to go, stay home. Please, just please listen to me on this matter. Save yourself while there's still time. I don't believe for a second that these things are just curious and are not out in some way or another to cause harm long term. These beings mean harm. You cannot convince me otherwise. Please, stay safe. And much love from Iowa. When I was 16, I would frequently spend a lot of time at my girlfriend's place, which she just lived with her dad, so it made sneaking in her bedroom at night much easier. Her dad worked the night shift and had unprecedented amounts of trust for his 16-year-old daughter. I was 17 at the time, and you know why teenagers sneak into each other's rooms. I don't need to get into that. I'm 36 now, so that's long behind me. But that's not why I'm writing to you. I drove a truck at the time. A 1994 Ford. That thing was very reliable, and would always get me to my girlfriend's place every night when I needed it to. This one night, though, things were weird. So, her and I were busy and we were both hearing strange noises out where my truck was. We just thought it was raccoons or something, and so we probably ignored it, and went back to being busy. Well, that's when we started hearing loud banging and scratching. It was very strange. It didn't make much sense at all. So we stopped, and I went outside. And that's, to my horror, when I saw what was on my truck. Huge claw scratches down the side of my truck, on the passenger side door and the driver's side. It looked like a bear had mauled the side of my vehicle. I just remember thinking, what on earth? And in that instance, as me and my girlfriend, both half naked, are out there standing at about 11.30 at night, looking at what animal did this to my truck, we both, in unison, get this terrible feeling, like someone is around, watching us. We feel like the victims in a serial killer movie just before he strikes. I told her, you need to get in the house and I'm going to leave. Now, I understand in hindsight how stupid this is, because being a good boyfriend, I should have stayed there and protected her. But I was so fearful that her dad was going to come around, or be around, and I was going to get an ass whooping, unlike ever before. So, I really didn't feel like taking any chances. I got out of there as quick as I possibly could. And yeah, 
I never did exactly figure out what tore up my truck. And no, I couldn't just buff those scratches out. They were deep. And to this day, I really wonder, what large animal could have made such a deep indentation in the side of my truck? I ignored it actually for a very long time, until I started getting into cryptids and scary stories back in 2015. Somehow, going through the scary story rabbit hole, I landed on the topic of dogmen, started learning more about them, and really grew fascinated with the whole subject. The thought that a real-life living werewolf-like creature could exist truly fascinates me. As I learn more, I begin to put the puzzle pieces together more and more. Now that I think about it, it's very possible that this cryptid could have been what did damage to my truck. You look at where my girlfriend's house was, which was right by a deep forest. I know her father did some stuff back there, but I don't know what. Not like hunting or anything, but I think he had a tree stand or something back there at one point. Again, I can't really say because my memory is fuzzy, but I'm pretty sure he caught a few rabbits back there. I don't know. Anyway, it just seemed like a good place for a dogman to be, and their house was pretty much kind of out down a lone road in the middle of nowhere. I don't remember them having any real neighbors around, which is why I was able to sneak out there so much completely unnoticed, and not have to worry about her neighbors tattling on her, telling her old man that yeah, your daughter's boyfriend was over and stayed over last night. Thank goodness. Ultimately, I feel pretty lucky. Not only did I avoid the grasp of a dogman, but I avoided the clenched fist of an angry father. Being a ranger isn't always easy. Sure, I get to see some of the most beautiful scenery in the country and talk to people from all walks of life. In addition, it is a great career for someone like me who just loves being outdoors. However, Dealing with those who are ignorant or do not understand the park rules or how our society actually works can be difficult at times, and a lot of them don't even know that the rules are there to protect them from things they couldn't even imagine. I once read something on a Reddit thread about how Stephen King must have had a park ranger on retainer to get story ideas. Whilst I highly doubt that, it is true that we see stuff that I bet most horror writers couldn't even dream of. One thing that never fails to freak me out, no matter how many times it happens, and it is way more often than you would think, is when you come across something that has absolutely no right to be there, and you have no clue how it could have possibly gotten there. Staircases being discovered. Okay, you might think at some point there must have been a building many years ago, and all that's left is the stairs. The only issue being that the trees surrounding the structure are hundreds of years old, and the stairs are not. So, there couldn't possibly have been any building there, and none of the trees are damaged, and there is no route or trail leading up to the area for some big-time practical joker to plant it there for some YouTube show. They're just there. The same with abandoned cars. They appear in areas that have been looked at many times before, maybe on foot or with an ARV. But again, there is no way a truck, camper van, etc. could have gotten there, and yet we find it. Sometimes in a state of decay, showing the vehicle had been there for years when, in reality, that area had been checked and reported back on only a few days ago. Sometimes when we check, the vehicles are registered to people who have been missing for years. Other times, they just don't seem to exist in the system. And once in a while, we find a person. Sometimes alive, other times just a body. Sometimes, they actually are hikers or hunters who've lost their way. And other times, they are not. We have found people wandering around in places that had been checking only a few hours before. Looking like they'd been lost for days when we finally managed to convince them that we are the good guys and want to help. We find that they've been missing for days and weeks and are not even from the US, let alone this area. They have no idea how they got there. These aren't people from war zones or drug smugglers. These are ordinary people 
who at one moment are sat at a desk in Germany. And next thing you know, it's three weeks later, and they're here in America, having virtually no idea how they ended up here. You won't find these sort of reports on your local news, so don't bother looking. We take them straight to a government building, and, well, they deal with it. So next time you are hiking, and you've been doing it for years, and a ranger tells you not to go somewhere, or you're hunting, and they tell you to avoid a certain area, do what they say. We are not being a job's worth to try to ruin your day. We are looking after you, because something is out there dumping bodies, cars, even people into our forests and parks. If something is just doing that, then maybe, just maybe, they are also taking things. The hikers that go missing, just maybe they were not dragged off by a bear or fell down a ravine and were eaten. Maybe they'll turn up somewhere in the middle of the desert and the country's government will come along and deal with them. And from what I've seen from the few moments I've spent in the company of one of those people, you do not want that to be you. Trust me on that one. Here, in the remotest parts of this land, we don't see much at night. However, I feel compelled to write about an incident that happened back in autumn of 2002. Something has disturbed me ever since and made me feel afraid to sleep or leave my house. I was living in a farmhouse with my new husband and my daughter. My daughter, at the time, was only around six months old, or so she kept waking during the night. I would have to awaken at least once every night to settle her, feed her, and pacify her. At times, I would sing a lullaby in the kitchen as I cradled her, and I would look out at the empty apartment blocks, the small communal garden and we were given as a grant from the government. On one occasion, my husband made a joke that my lullaby would attract criminals to the apartment complex. It was quite a haunting tune, he said. It was a tune that my own grandmother had sung to me, and she left me the words on a little sheet of paper. She stated to me that it kept evil spirits away and would protect the crops from any scourges. I was not aware that it sounded haunting, but occasionally, as I sung it to my daughter, I would see little flickers of light out of the apartment complex, as if people had awoken to my singing. On this particular night, I was singing the lullaby, and then heard a screeching sound from the small garden outside. Walking over to my window, still singing the lullaby, and saw something that nearly made me drop my daughter. This creature, something that was not human, was the size of something I'd never seen. It was like staring at me, red eyes, but slits almost. It appeared to be the size and shape of a hyena, and that was really the only creature it reminded me of. It was brown and had kind of a long tail, but what was most peculiar is the creature had large wings. They kind of extended outwards like a huge web, and it was really pale on the inside. It was bizarre and frightening, ugly. I covered my daughter's eyes, but I had a feeling that she had glimpsed it. Its face was weird too. It was kind of goblin fox-like, very strange features, but terrifying and demonic nonetheless. I tried to call for my husband, but words would not leave my mouth. I was totally perplexed by this creature that was sitting in my garden, just yards away. I felt sick and troubled. Where had this creature come from? What did it want from me? These were all questions that stirred in my mind, and eventually, I managed to back away from the window and walk up the stairs. I awoke my husband, who came down with the raised baseball bat. When we got down, the creature had gone. We debated calling the police, but because I had suffered from depression, we decided not to. We didn't want to make the police think that I was a threat or a danger to my child. All I know is, is there are wild and not so wonderful creatures in the animal kingdom. The things that even the most explored of environmentalists 
can't comprehend. Whatever it was, I saw it with my own two eyes. And because it was so disturbing, I have lived a life fraught with tensions and anxiety ever since. My daughter, too, has now encountered problems of her own. Now 20, she still experiences night terrors and calls me in a panic if she is home alone. It's as if that memory has been etched into her brain, but I have never brought it to fruition. I have never discussed it. Now, we stayed at that apartment for two years after this incident, and any time I had to awake during the night to go to the kitchen, I would feel a dread expecting to see this thing out there again, waiting to reappear and bring back those horrible memories. Although it never did, that was the only time I would see it. I am writing this to make an inquiry about the disappearance of a French student known as Michelle. I know this sounds odd as today in 2021, but Michelle was last seen hiking in the Six Rivers Forest here in California back in 1996. I think I have a lead. I am 22 years old and I was hiking in the Six Rivers Forest a few weeks back with a boyfriend. We are both seasoned hikers and are so used to seeing strange creatures, strange flowers and growths. But we encountered something that to us looked dangerous, something dreadful and unusual that had the potential to kill. There was an open grassland area in which we were both walking. The path was steep and mucky, so it was about becoming quite strenuous for us both. What was odd was that it was early, around 11 a.m., but the sky was becoming sort of a dark orange hue, as if it were early evening. When we looked around, there were no other hikers, which was also odd. But we shelved our concerns, continuing on our path. As we got deeper into the path, we came to the peak of the mountain, where we overlooked a sort of valley with overgrown foliage and densely packed wooded areas. My boyfriend shouted, Look! and my eyes swept down to see something on the valley. Something that I initially thought was just an hallucination. It was a creature, such as I'd never seen before. It was made up out of trees and branches and foliage, but it was in the shape of a large deer. It was green and appeared to be decorated. The branches throughout its body, too, were decorated in various patterns, kind of giving it a sense of structure and that it did. As I had good eyesight, I could make it out clearly, and could see even its face had tiny eyes, and its antlers, too, were made up of branches and wood. I would have thought it was a design of some sort, or some mural, but it was moving and walking around. It lowered its face to the ground, seemingly for food, and every so often, little sparkles of gold dust flew out of its antlers, dancing into the morning sky. When we took out our cameras, our phones were both paused. It was so frustrating as we had never seen such a thing before. It was walking around a small open area, surrounded by woodland and a small pond. When I focused further and got a little closer, I could see that around the area was several skeletons fully formed, and lying as if to mark a territory around this thing. At that moment, my blood got cold and I got scared. I grabbed my boyfriend. He pulled me back. After that, we walked carefully back up the path to the north and back to the peak where we originally descended and made our way back to the car. The whole time I was walking back, I felt like I had crossed some boundary, some marking in the land that was designed to keep people out. I was also thinking of Michelle a lot and couldn't help but feel that people had gone missing in the forest. They couldn't have possibly been harmed by this strange creature. I figured that, even as a park ranger, and their infinite wisdom of nature, they know that this is not beyond the realm of possibility, and that things exist within the universe that we have not quite grasped. I therefore am contacting them in hopes they can help me search the area, preferably with a team and a chopper. I can give them exact composites on the map where we encountered this thing. 
we owe it to the people who enjoy the forest, for our children and their children, for Michelle and her family. When I was a student, I volunteered in my local library on Saturdays to try and get some work experience. This was an enjoyable job, and one that I truly did enjoy. It was an old library that had been built in the 16th century, so all the architecture was old and gothic. Apparently, during the 16th century and thereabouts, it was actually used as a prison for suspected witches and black magic practitioners. There was an ancient and spooky building in the library, but for me, it was a fascinating place to work. On one occasion, however, my last shift to be exact, I encountered something terrifying, as did our end day of checks on the premise. As our building supervisors had left the building, it was up to myself and a colleague to ensure that all users had left the premises. When I was doing my end day checks, I went to check on the bathrooms. We had a reoccurring problem in which local drug addicts were using the toilets as a place to shoot up, so I was slightly anxious about doing this. As I walked over to check, I heard a growling or a grunting noise. It was unusual, and I assumed that somebody had passed out in the bathroom stall. When I opened the door, I saw this strange being. It appeared to be like a short person, but kind of like this disgusting ogre. But imagine it being more like an imp, I guess is what you'd call them. About a foot or two high, black skin, pointed ears. It literally looked like a little demon. I, in that moment, was petrified and terrified at what I was looking at. This thing was staring right at me, and I wondered if it would strike and assume I was a threat. But it remained passive and stared at me with these small beady black eyes. I attempted to call for my colleague, but my voice was so faint, nothing happened. Within seconds, this creature or being just evaporated, like that, just gone, dematerialized in the air. My colleague came in, wondering what I wanted. She saw that I was completely terrified and confused. That's when she began to doubt my own sanity. Had I simply imagined the whole experience, I feel that whatever I saw got scared and maybe is some sort of demon or shapeshifter. I don't know anything. Earlier that day, a customer had actually reported seeing this unusual bird that flew into the library and sat outside. I mean, if that's what it is, it is fascinating that such things of the paranormal still exist here due to all the witch and black magic practitioners existed here at one point too. I wonder if there's any connection between the two. I know what sounds like a very crazy story, but it is true. My name is Kenny, and I was at a friend's house when this happened. You see, we were in the woods near his house, and I saw something moving from behind the bushes. It looked to be like some sort of giant human-sized turtle. Now, I know that sounds nutty, and you're probably thinking, it's not the 80s. Ninja Turtles don't exist. But give me a second to explain. My friend lived in this huge house that had been in his family for generations. It had a ton of land. However, a whole lot of it was overgrown and full of woodland, which meant we could often play and run around for hours as kids without ever having to worry about trespassing on somebody else's property. It also meant that we could hold out parties when we were out of high school without bothering anybody or police showing up, which was awesome. It was also when we were getting ready for one of these things that it happened, as well as having the best party venue in the school. My buddy had made varsity on the football team, and his list of invites suddenly included more jocks and, more importantly, cheerleaders. So, instead of the just usual let's drink some beer in the woods, we were planning on going all out to impress the ladies and were actually clearing some of the growth away 
so they wouldn't be complaining about getting twigs and such in their hair. You know how girls can be. As I said, they owned a huge amount of land, and towards the rear of the property, near where the woods ended, but before you got to the road, was a pond. As with everything else, it had not so much been neglected, but certainly left to nature, and whilst we were happy paddling in it as kids, the stagnant-looking water and foul smell, not to mention the thought of leeches was enough to keep us away as teens. We hadn't been that far down in years, but I just wanted to be checking it out. My parents both worked long hours and often joked there was so much land around the house that they could have people living in the woods. They'd never even know. I never really thought too much about that possibility until I heard the noises and saw something moving around in the bushes close to the water. Now, of course there were all sorts of animals that lived in these woods. We'd seen all the usual squirrels, woodchucks, birds, even a few deer now and then. But this was different. At one point, there'd even been a family of feral cats. But whatever was moving about and making a very weird snuffling noise was way bigger and larger than any rabbit or duck we'd ever found before. My buddy was always the braver one, or maybe just more inclined to show it off. But rather than showing any fear, he picked up a rock and hurled it over the brush. There was a clunking sound as if the rock had connected with something hard and solid. Quickly, followed by the kind of noise that could only be translated as, ouch, that hurt. A sort of whiny squeal. That was enough to make us both grab the biggest looking sticks we could find, just in case whatever was over there was pissed enough to attack. Now, I could honestly say that I don't know what I was expecting. Given the size of it, but I don't think anybody could have imagined what we saw. It stood up, slowly, as if it wasn't used to being on two legs, sort of unfurling itself almost. When it reached its full height, it looked to be about five foot tall. It was literally a giant-sized turtle. Not like one of those giant turtles I once saw down in Florida, where they are actual turtles just really big. No, this was man-shaped proportions. Let me explain. So, instead of four tiny legs and a little head that pops out of a big shell, this thing had long, ghastly arms legs like a person, but still a body and torso the way the shell would look, and a small little head. This thing looked exactly like you can imagine a turtle to. Small tiny eyes, a tiny nostrils, large teeth. It was gross. It opened its mouth and had all this terrible teeth. Of course, we told everybody at the party, not exactly sure what we'd seen, and didn't want them to think we'd hopped on a bus to Crazy Town. But we said that there was some sort of gross, messed-up creature that must have spent years mutating down in the dirty water. Of course, you can imagine the amount of Ninja Turtle jokes we would have gotten had we told people this. We didn't see anything and thought it was all just a joke. We never saw this thing again, but we never forgot him. At approximately 1 a.m., At approximately 1 a.m., my friend Leza and I had just left the bar. We were walking to our cars in an adjacent parking lot, the same parking lot that people have claimed to see the Mothman. Now, I'm not normally the type of person who believes in cryptids, but there's this saying, you gotta see it to believe it. And now, I believe. Now, you'll have noted I said we were at the bar and then club. It was late, but we had only had a couple of drinks of beers as we were both driving and working the next day. So, we were by no means drunk. Some people say that you have to be in the right frame of mind for something like this, too. And maybe we were, as although I said, until that moment, I didn't actually believe. I still enjoyed hearing stories about people who thought they had seen something, and let's face it, Mothman sounded cool. 
times, so Leza and I were actually joking about it, trying to spook each other and saying, ooh, ah, each time we saw a shadow. You know, that sort of thing. It started to rain, too, but since we were on our way home, rather than into the club, we weren't all that bothered. It was actually kind of refreshing. When we had arrived at the lot, it was jam-packed, so we had to park quite a few ways away, and it wasn't so well lit. We were more worried about being jumped than seeing some sort of flying monster, which is why we always parked together. Now, the rain was coming down in mists, and we were going to be drenched when I felt this sudden urge to pretend I'd seen something under her car. Don't ask me why, it was just one of those things that seemed funny at the time, like you think you're the world's best comedian. So, I'm getting ready to make her jump, when suddenly, she stopped still in the middle of the lot, and I literally bumped into her. We were only a few feet away from the cars, and she spun around right in my face and hissed, Look! Now, since I had been just about to pull a prank on her, I naturally assumed she was trying to do the same thing to me, but being a good friend and in one of those moods, I just decided to play along. I said, ooh, what's that? A monster. I asked in giggles, of course, and she slaps me on the shoulder, a look on her face that in 10 years of friendship I had never seen. Pure fear. She wasn't messing around. She wasn't an actress. Look, she said again, but I knew she wasn't messing. As she is starting her car, I had planned to prank her, only there was actual movement. As I said, it wasn't quite so lit in that part, so whatever was under her car in the shadow, you can make out something was there, and it wasn't small like a cat. There was also this weird sort of squelchy wet noise, and I knew it was raining, but it wasn't that. It was something else entirely. Now... The first thought that went through my mind was this is some kind of maniac. I mean, I was literally just joking about the Mothman. I knew that stuff was BS, but there was no way that anything under this car was something other than a skeevy human being. And in that moment, seeing the fear on Les's face made me mad. I grabbed my keys with one hand and my purse in the other and shouted, We see you! Get out of here! Maybe I thought some dude from the club was going to roll up from under there and run off. Hell, I don't know what I imagined was going to happen. I was functioning purely on adrenaline and rage. What I did not expect was the thing under the car to sort of slither out and then behind. Whatever it was, I knew that no human could move like that. Now again, I have no idea why other than the morbid curiosity... But instead of freezing in terror like Leza, or running away screaming, I wanted to know what this thing was. So I grabbed my cell, flipped on the flashlight app, and ran around to the back of the car. I will do my best to describe what I saw. I see it so often in my nightmares now. I mean, I should be able to give it an accurate description. But despite seeing it with my own eyes and very much believing it, it's still hard for me to put out into words. The thing on the floor was like a giant snake. But unlike something like an anaconda or some terrifying yet real creature that you might find swimming through the Amazon, this one had a very distinctive difference besides being in a parking lot rather than a river. It had a human head. And I don't mean it was holding or eating a human. It had an actual human head attached to the entire snake body. No arms or legs that I could visibly see, just a long body, like a regular snake. Now, I only got a quick look, but the head looked male to me. It was bold. I couldn't make out any ears, but other than that, there were very obvious eyes. A nose and a mouth. A mouth which was wide open, displaying many teeth. And when I saw it looking at me, it kind of hissed, slithering off towards the woods to the back end lot. I think at that point, Leza and I swapped 
as now we stood stationary, frozen in fear, and she had snapped out of her shock and came running over to me, asking if I was okay. What I told her what I'd seen, she took one look at me and knew I was telling the truth. So much so that we both had jumped in my car and spent the night in my house, only returning to collect her car the next morning when it was light out. Thankfully, there was no sign of the thing and no damage to her car or evidence it had ever been there. We also found a new bar and club to visit to make sure to always park right near the entrance together. I will never laugh again if somebody says they've seen a UFO or a Bigfoot or whatever. If I have seen an actual snakeman, then I guess anything is possible. What do you think I saw? Was this a real-life reptilian encounter? Or what? I'll tell you a secret. I'm not sure how long I can keep this up. So many people need me, and they don't know that the other things are out there. If one gets into your house at night, while you're sleeping, what then? If I had been more careful, we might not be in this situation. I would better start from the beginning. Although, for obvious reasons, I can't tell you too much about who I really am. But I am part of a search and rescue team specializing in national parks and forests. You wouldn't believe how many people will go missing or need help on a daily basis. I cover a huge expansive area in Southern California. That's as much as it is safe to tell you. The first thing I'll tell you is that not everybody goes missing should be found. Now, that sounds awful for someone who literally works in the field of rescuing people. So, let me explain. Sometimes, not all the time, thank God, but sometimes, things happen to people whilst they're out, waiting to be found. And what they see, do, go through in order to survive, changes them. You've all heard of the infamous Donner Party, right? The movie Alive? It happens way more than you think. You have a party of even just two people. They both get into danger. One dies and the other is trapped or badly injured, and they just have to wait. Starvation can drive you slowly mad and all of a sudden, your buddy who is no longer around to care could be your sole chance at surviving. But something changes if you have had to reach that point. The indigenous people even have had a creature so terrifying they don't like to speak of it. The Wendigo, who was once a human, who succumbed to evil, and part of that is cannibalism. I think something like that is what happens to just a handful of these people. The people that we don't find and assume they've been drug off by bears or cougars or something. Although, I don't know exactly what happens to them, or how or why they survive, but they are no longer human, and they don't want to be found. We had this horrible situation a few years ago, where mom, dad, and teen son went missing. They were young, fit, and healthy. They should not have had a single reason for them to have disappeared off the planned route. But when they didn't report back to base, we went looking. Well, it took a week to find them. The dad had died first. It looked like a head trauma. The son had two broken legs and had died shortly thereafter. There was no sign of the mom, although there were traces of her blood at the scene. To start with, it looked like the pair had been mauled by animals, possibly coyotes or scavengers. But when the M.E. looked closely, yeah, you got it. Human bite marks, and they matched it to the mom's dental records. We never found her. Not a trace except for the blood at the scene suggesting she too was injured. But, it looked like she had consumed enough of her husband and son to stay alive. That was the only incident I had actually been to. But, I have heard plenty of similar stories over the years. And then, around six months ago, I came across something. It won't surprise you to learn that, as well as working for SNR, I am passionate about nature and wildlife. I've been writing sort of a memoir for the last couple of years 
specifically documenting all the different species of animals, insects, birds, anything really that I come across. I've been tracking this beautiful stag and really wanted to see it if it would lead me to her herd or family, just so I could record it. It had not been bothered by my presence the entire time, seeming to accept that I meant it no harm and was just interested. It seemed to be headed towards a cave system, and I realized just how far off the trail I had ventured, but I was confident in finding my way back. I also had not realized it was getting so late. That can happen sometimes when I get really caught up in something. Something seemed to catch the attention of the stag, and all of a sudden, it shot off, racing through the trees and away from the caverns as if its life depended on it. That should have been all the warning I needed. But of course, I wanted to know what was in that cave that had freaked out this large, majestic creature. Even when I heard the growl at first, I didn't run. Intrigue overpowering fear and natural instinct to get out of there. It didn't sound like a bear or a cougar, or to be honest, any kind of animal I'd heard before. It sounded almost human. And then I saw it. She, I should say. She was barely recognizable, but I'd stared at her photo for many hours over the years, wondering what had become of her. There seemed to be very little of her left. She now resembled more like how cave people were represented in museums. Filthy, naked, and it looked as if she'd gotten used to being bent over or crouched in the cave as her spine was warped. And finding her still alive was the most shocking part. Standing next to her, equally as naked and covered in mud and blood, was a child, probably around two years old. She went missing over three years ago and was not pregnant. You can bet that I ran, and I was scared for my life. I took the wrong path to start with, hitting a dead end, almost immediately, where yet another cave mouth opened. I didn't dare hang about, but just for a moment, my eye caught something glinting in what was left of the sunshine. I saw a license plate on the ground, along with various bits of clothing and some bones. As I turned and fled, thankfully hitting the right trail that time, I couldn't stop thinking about the plate how they could have only encountered a car if they ventured further into the park and onto the woods. What I should have done was reported it. I should have gotten the police and headed back and let them deal with those. Well, they weren't people anymore. But I didn't. Instead, I head out where whenever I can keep watch. If I see any movement, I fire my gun to warn them. But I'm just one person. I can't be there all the time. Why do I do this? Why don't I tell? I don't know. If someone else gets hurt, I'll be to blame. I just don't know what to do. Or know how many others there are in those hundreds of caves and tunnels. I'm not much of a believer in cryptids. But I do feel that whatever this was, it could have been some sort of large lizard. Here's my story. I believe I came up to a close encounter with what I would say is a lizard man. It was in my hometown of Amarillo, Texas. I'm 25 years old, male from the US. I currently work at Walmart as a manager and have been for about five years now. Coming home from work late at night one evening, I reside next to a large apartment complex. There's a few ponds around it, lots of trees, and on this night, I noticed something moving very fast toward the building. It was springtime and all this time of year, everything is coming out in full bloom. As I'm pulling closer, that's when I notice movement from something very large, I think coming out by one of the ponds closer to my house. I had a good view of it. I was about 50 yards from this thing. Now, it looked like a very large lizard man kind of running on all fours. It was running impossibly fast across the pavement toward the building and the swimming pool area. The thing ran on its hind legs after running on four and quickly shifted to two halfway through the road. 
It had a very thin body with short, stubby front arms, but longer, skinny back legs. The feet appeared to be webbed, kind of like a duck would, and they were also scaled, and it had a long, slender tail that had drug behind it. I would say Lizard Man, but I don't know what it was. It looked to be about maybe six feet high, and it had cat-like eyes. They looked bright yellow. I felt very uneasy by watching it. I'm not much of a believer, but the sighting changed for me. There's no way this was a person playing Halloween. I think that's impossible. I looked around and saw the lizard man running away from me, just before it dove into the night, not to be seen again. It was a really eerie feeling, knowing that there was something else out there that I did not know anything about. I wasn't alone, like ever. This experience changed me, and changed my habits of how I live when I got home. So, if you see something, don't be afraid to report it. This could happen to anybody. I'm even weird about how I use the term lizard man, because I know it sounds so ridiculous, but that's exactly what it looks like. As a matter of fact, this thing looked like it stepped off the Hollywood stage of a horror movie. I mean, that's just how realistic this thing looked. Creepy. Now, as far as I know, there are no other reports or stories by anyone that I've heard of that has heard about this. I know Bigfoot is a thing, but I've never seen one or any of those. However, this lizard man phenomenon is something different. I'll try and spend some time searching around and see if I can't maybe find any more stories. I'm sure I'm not the only one to have seen this thing. I just hope I don't ever have to see it again. One evening, I was driving home from work. My wife was sitting in the passenger seat of my car. We were on our way to pick up a pizza, as we both had a late night of work. Suddenly, this huge creature in the form of a gigantic lizard reptile thing leapt out onto the highway and began running towards our car. We slam on the brakes, and it runs right past us. I think I just reacted, because most people would floor it. We got a brief look at it before it disappeared into the bush on the other side of the road. We were both in total shock for about five minutes before we pulled back onto the highway. We did make it back home, telling our kids what we had just seen, and that it was really scary. But we didn't tell them what exactly we thought it was. Since we were both in shock, we tried to shoot ideas of what we think it could have been. My wife was crying, she was so scared. And of course, I too was terrified. I'm not sure what it was, but I know that it wasn't a bear, or a mountain lion, or a deer, or a man. I've never in my life heard or seen anything about upright walking reptiles that are native to the United States. I've never heard of in my life any sort of reptile that could have fit this description. It's like it was something from outer space. The next morning, I started frantically looking up information on reptiles when I came across something called a cryptid. Apparently, there are reptilian cryptids, if I'm saying that right, that have been sighted a lot in this part of Texas for years now. I had no idea. It really got me thinking about how crazy this world really is and all the things we don't know. I started doing research into the creature and found some more interesting things. I guess this is a kind of alien and is often referred to as a reptilian. On average, they're about seven to nine feet tall and walk upright, which is actually pretty close to what we saw. It has been known to walk around on four legs as well. It's often dark and scaly. The creature is also said to be sometimes spotted with horns, large nostrils, and eyes like a snake. We didn't really see the face much, but the head kind of reminded me of a lizard. Anyway, this thing is reported to apparently attack people, or lie in wait, when it feels threatened. I guess there have been many eyewitnesses, in the southern states especially, for years now. Other than that night, I have never encountered one before. I was terrified at first, but beginning to think it's just another ghost story, like the ghost of St. Augustine, where it's a woman in white. I don't know. 
the whole thing is just so confusing. I don't talk about what happened much because people just won't believe me. I haven't encountered a cryptid that is similar to those described in this article. I'm not sure what it is or what it was, but it seemed, again, like something from outer space. I think that makes more sense to me than what we had encountered. I think it's a strange alien being. I don't talk about this with anyone else, because who else is going to believe me and my wife? So I'm thankful I was able to reach out to you from this article. It's been really eye-opening to find out about all these cryptid creatures. I'm still not sure what we saw, but it makes sense that it was an alien. I don't want to scare people or anything. I just wanted to share my story and let people know they're not alone in seeing these creatures out there, if they do. This encounter story happened on November 22nd, 2013. Rural Indiana. This person was going into the forest to investigate some strange noises that they had heard. That day, they had been standing at the edge of a forest near the house. Apparently chilly but sunny, and there were puffy clouds and a bright blue sky. They liked being outside on a nice fall day like this, so they weren't planning on going back inside for a while. There was just too much to do. So they were working on practicing their archery skills with some new arrows that they had bought earlier, when suddenly, something strange interrupted them. Through the trees, they heard an odd sound that resembled several things at once. It seemed to be part screeching bird, part human shriek, part banshee scream. And although none of those are actually very similar sounds in themselves, all of them were in there together. Listening carefully, it seemed to be coming up from the mountain. So they went around the corner of the forest and began to climb up this small rocky slope. When they were approaching the source of the noise, it was growing louder and more distant. Suddenly, they came over the small rise in the landscape and stopped short. There stood a strange creature that was reported to be about 12 feet tall. It had this nasty scaly skin, yellow eyes that reflected back. Its head looked like that of an alligator, only bigger. It turned to this person, noticing them right away. And although they made eye contact, it started to hypnotize them, or so the person would describe. In fact, this individual describes being kind of lured towards up here, which is why they came this area, climbed up the rocky slope, and to see this thing. The oddest thing of all, instead of running away though, they found themselves moving closer and closer to it while it moved in their direction. Before they ever met up, there was one more very strange thing that occurred. They appeared to be in a hypnotic state, being lured ever closer to this strange creature. They walked forward, hypnotized, and when they got to about eight or nine feet from this thing, they were convinced this creature was going to kill them. They don't know what happened, but something in their minds snapped, and the trance was broken. They turned around to run, but it was too late. Their legs would not work, so they just stood there while this creature came closer and closer. There were two rows of teeth they reported in its mouth, like that of a shark. But then, just as it lunged and was about to bite, it started letting out this horrendous scream. They would later learn that it was because, or so they believed, that the chewing tobacco was such a strong odor, it hated the smell. It's a very odd conclusion, but it's the only thing that this witness could possibly think of. As it got closer, it kind of made a face like it got a whiff of something he didn't like. This eyewitness had a large dip in, as well as a can of chew in their coat pocket when this happened. So that's the only evidence we can really guess or go by. They were not going to risk it. They took their chance and fled as fast as possible to escape. Absolutely terrified by what they saw, and nothing like this had ever happened to them before, and they didn't know what to do. They don't really know what it was. They don't want to see it again. They were successful in making their way back to the truck and driving themselves home without a problem. They're not sure what they saw, but all they could say is it was very scary. They will say this, though. They've had friends that have gone out in these parts 
and have had very similar sightings and experiences. It's possible, too, that they saw the thing that this person described. Now, I'm going to go ahead and end this encounter story. This story was shared to me by a family relative. I'm just passing it along. While I won't mention their blood relation to me, they are a close relative, and they wish to remain anonymous, and asked me if I could share their story. They're not too good at typing, so they told it to me by ear and had me do this for them. They're big listeners of your show, and they appreciate all the episodes you put out. They want to give you a big thank you. And hopefully, just hopefully, you get to read this to your audience. This was not that long ago, pre-COVID. I was out hunting in the woods with my good friend Mike, Sir so we'll call him, and we decided to take a break on a fallen tree. I saw something ever so briefly coming through the trees, which caught my eye, so I pointed at it, trying to tell Mike what I'd seen. He looked where I pointed, but said he didn't see anything. But then his mouth fell open. He cried out as we watched this thing move stealthily toward us. Then we could see it. It had red eyes, scales, and it kind of looked like an upright walking alligator. Its hands were very similar to that too, having four to five large claws in each hand. You could believe that by seeing something like this, nobody would believe us, and we were completely terrified. I'm surprised I didn't soil my pants. We both just reacted, turned up and ran like hell. This thing started chasing us. All the while, if you were able to see my face, you would have seen the pure terror on it. I've never been that scared before. It was a primal level of fear. Me and Mike just kept running, not even stopping once, until about half an hour later, when we were still running, or so I like to believe. I say that because I lost track of time, but I just remember running and running and running, and this thing following us and not stopping. It was relentless. I do remember at one point Mike tripping and falling, and I had to go back and pick him up although I couldn't see what this thing was. But we're asking, what was that thing? As he was shouting with fear in his voice. We had just straight up witnessed something out of a horror movie. We got out of there, but we still talk about it now and then. I think we're convinced that we must have stumbled upon this thing's territory at some point. I mean, we've never imagined something like this ever before. The section of woods we went out to is where we've gone and gallivanted many times before from hunting to just having a bonfire. I don't know where this thing came from, where it lives, and I don't care. I don't want to see it again. Back in 2009 and 2010, in the Midwest section of Texas, I encountered a creature similar to what we have come to know as the Dogman. At first, I thought it was just somebody playing a prank on me and there would be no reason for anybody else being out in that area at that time of night and date. I mean, we're talking 10 p.m., a very rural countryside. In fact, just recently, my wife even commented on something that she had witnessed about six years ago while working late one night when our oldest daughter was only two years old. She works at an undisclosed location near San Antonio, located right off of Highway 151, north of a small town in Texas. A little before midnight, she had heard what she thought was a dog outside her building, frantically going crazy and barking like it was being attacked. When she went outside to investigate, she saw what was going on. She saw this was not a dog, but instead, a tall, dark creature running towards her with something in its arms, while making this strange grunting sound. She claims that it reminded her of somebody trying to imitate a werewolf. The next day, she showed me this video on YouTube called Dogman Encounters. This wasn't the Vic kind of show. This was this clip that I guess she had found. It apparently was uncut footage of two hunters who had encountered this same creature. I think they called it the Texas Wildman, but... There is no doubt about their identity after watching their 30-minute unedited tape. Keep in mind, 
These are not just two guys out to hoax people. At least, or so I think. They seem pretty genuinely scared by what they saw, and I'm sure the creature made some kind of impression on them that they will never forget. Just like my wife, my daughter, and my family. I can't find the link to the video, but I'll have to send it to you later. Anyway, it shows this creature that looks very similar to what my wife had described seeing nearly years ago now. Before, she could have well mistaken it for being something else at the time, but now, knowing what exactly it was after watching this video, she is now convinced that there are such creatures out there lurking around rural areas, looking for food or just playing practical jokes on people. This also makes me wonder if this creature had set up an ambush by hiding in tall grass and bushes near the road, which is how I personally came to be attacked by a creature just like this. But that's for another time, another story. The creature looked like a large, aggressive dog that was walking upright on its hind legs. It had huge, powerful arms, long, sharp claws, and appeared to have very strong jaws with teeth like knives protruding out of its mouth. There is no doubt about what this thing does for a living, or why. It does not appear to be civilized, or for that matter, uncivilized. It just seems to exist. Now, I know from watching the videos that these two hunters had set up their trail cams in a very remote area, outside some small woods or thicket next to a creek bed. They are using something they call bear lights, so you can see quite clearly, even at night. One of the guys appeared to have what I swore was an AK-47, although I'm not sure why anybody would have that. Anyway, this creature appears around 1 minute and 52 seconds in. The guy who filmed it was about 3 feet away from his buddy when they both heard something very strange that night, causing them to investigate what was going on. You can see that just before this thing walks by, it stands straight up, like a human would, when trying to listen intently for something in front of them. He turns his head in two different directions, as if using his ears, instead of using his eyesight. There wasn't really much light in that night. The creature is seen standing behind some tall grass before coming out and walking slowly between these two hunters in another direction. Both guys are visibly shocked by what they see, and at this point, the one guy not holding the camera is now several hundred feet away from the guy holding the camera. This thing looks to be about seven feet tall, dark in color, long legs and arms with huge hands and claws, including what look to be opposable thumbs, a very muscular athletic body, canine face, and a small short snout, but very large set in eyes. You can definitely tell this was some sort of nocturnal animal, and would explain why it appears to be looking around, mostly using its hearing instead of sight. It appeared to have a thin layer of hair covering the entire body. Think of like a Rottweiler, or maybe a Doberman Pinscher. That kind. There's hair, you could see the muscles and definition, but very short. It seemed to be exerting itself walking uphill, which is steep, rugged terrain. So, I'm not too sure. But it looked exactly like the creature that I saw attack me. And my wife claims it's the exact same creature that she saw that night, six years ago now. If I can find that video again, I'll be sure to send it to you. I know your viewers will eat that up. Anyway, I'll let you know if I hear anything else interesting. And I'll be sure to sit down and type out my personal encounter too. This email is just designed to break the ice and share with you some of my stories. Thank you. Here in eastern Minnesota, there is a piece of wooded territory near the small town of Pine City. People have told stories for years of seeing a werewolf-like creature. It's been called many things. The Wolfman, Hyena Man, and of course Dogman, just to name a few off the top of my head. I have also heard that some people here call it Fangface. Maybe it's more of a slang thing, but I'm not sure. In this particular part of Minnesota, 
I was told at one point that this particular part of Minnesota was once known as the Strip due to its remote nature, thinly populated with only a few scattered farmhouses and other buildings between miles upon miles of thick, dense forest. Over time, the Strip got shortened to simply Strip. I first heard about the Dogman, Wolfman, Fangface, whatever, when I was about 10 years old. This other boy, named Kelly, claimed to have seen it when his family lived on one of the small farmhouses out near the Strip. He described this creature as a werewolf. I mean, that's the best of his ability at the time. Short black fur, red eyes, long three to four inch claws on each finger, huge fangs. He said it was like a saber-toothed cat. They shot out of its mouth. Now, I didn't believe him at first, but... After hearing more and more stories of something similar being spotted, I became convinced that there was some sort of wolf dogman creature living out there somewhere. Even the local Native Americans refer to this area as a place where spirits live among ancient burial mounds. Something shiny can often be seen moving through the treetops in those parts. One person who saw it actually thought it was just somebody's beer can, but they weren't aware that a person couldn't be up there in the treetops, not even with wind. No wonder people here think this entire place is haunted. I've heard stories now about several scary dogman encounters from locals. An old man who was living out near the strip said that he one time shot it with his 12-gauge shotgun. When he went to check the animal, it was gone, and all that remained was a blood trail a woman told me about how she had seen something like an enormous beast covered in black hair darting across the road in front of her car at nighttime. She stopped the car, opened her door to get a better look, but before she got out, the thing disappeared into the trees. She never did get back out of the car. Also, a bunch of kids were in one of those old farmhouses one night while playing with the Ouija board and they believe they summoned something that was supposed to be the dogman, or werewolf, whatever it is. They all said it was big, black, and hairy. One of the boy's fathers came home earlier than expected. While everybody else fled from the house, he went upstairs to see why everybody had left so suddenly. When he opened his bedroom door, he saw this thing standing there, but didn't say anything because he thought it might have been a dream. The next day, after hearing what had happened at the house, the boy told his father about seeing the thing, and they both assumed that they had maybe had just seen something on TV, but I don't think so. When I was in middle school, we had a substitute teacher who told us that she had been involved in somebody's dogman sighting up there near the strip. This couple saw one in their barnyard one night, they were certain it was the dogman, due to its stature, its eyes, its long legs, and just the overall nature of this creature. It ran off into the forest when the husband shot at this thing. Later on, this woman was found out by another story from a friend of hers, whose name I forget, who claimed to have seen something similar while driving down Highway 71 towards Pine City. He claims that he almost hit something enormous. It was gray-colored, running on all fours, and looked like what he said to be a very, very large wolf. He claims that if he would have hit this thing, it would have been like hitting a moose. Completely would have totaled his car. The male witness also said that his friend, whose name again I forget, saw something similar up near somewhere called Devil's Lake. He claims that she was up in vacation in Canada with her husband and kids when she heard some odd noises coming from outside one night during their stay at their cabin. They discovered three of these creatures attacking and ripping into a deer carcass hanging up high in nearby trees, tearing off pieces of meat and throwing them around like rabid monkeys. She claimed to have seen these things standing upright on two legs while doing this, but was not able to get the best look at them due to the time of night and just the darkness. 
One of the kids in my high school told me about a dogman sighting that also happened while he was out fishing one night on Little Pine Lake. He said that something brushed up by him, knocked his tackle box into the lake before running away, leaving only footprints behind. The woods have always been full of things like this. Our Native American ancestors left signs to warn people about such things many, many years ago. It's no wonder why others believe that these are real critters that live among us. I myself had an encounter with something there in those same woods, not too long ago now. I went hiking up near Butternut Creek late one afternoon, but it wasn't longer after dark when I decided to head back home, since it was now getting dark. I got lost on the way back, ending up spending the night in a small cave that I had found. It was pretty cold, so I had to sleep under some rags, but it wasn't too bad. Metaphorically speaking, of course. A few days later, while hiking around near where the caves were located that I found, I swore that there were bloodstains leading off into the woods. Very strange. There was no evidence or case of a carcass. Now, a couple years after that, a friend of mine who actually lives in Pine City went hunting with his father near Blueberry Lake. He said that they heard something big moving through the woods below them when they turned to look. Whatever this thing was, they barely saw a glimpse of it, but they both claimed that they saw tall, upright, pointed ears. My friend's dad even once told me about how he had come across some very large canine footprints in the snow, up near where they had been hunting. He said it was about a man's size 13 foot, but they didn't look right, much bigger than a Great Dane's. I'm sure that some people who live out in the country probably just think these stories are nothing but folklore or tall tales, if not outright lies. But I've always heard that people aren't making this stuff up. I mean, there are several reports now of Dogwin sightings from all across Wisconsin, Michigan, the Midwest, other states, countries, and provinces. Many of these things appear to have human-like faces, or even half-human, half-wolf. Some even claim them to be nearly eight feet tall when standing upright. Other than having an actual werewolf for an enemy, what else could they be? These things are called dogmen, to my recollection. All names for the same thing. I don't think there's a real name to hide what these really are, since it doesn't bother most people. Others may feel differently about this. I believe they are werewolves. In any case, I hope you enjoyed reading all these stories that got shared to me. I hope you enjoy sharing them with your audience. A lot of television stations around here have been reporting on a strange creature that has been spotted and even photographed by some hunters. Everywhere from California as far as Minnesota, apparently. Most people believe that this is probably a Bigfoot, but there's a growing number in our local community that claims it might be something more, maybe like a dogman. What is now being seen in a few photographs obtained by several hunters around here is some kind of strange hairy hominid. It appears to be tall and slender, perhaps around six feet. Some say this creature could very well be an undiscovered species that we've yet to name or classify. My encounter is very similar to what has been described. I know there's things going around and there's also dogmen, known as type 1 or type 2. You're the expert here, not I. So maybe you can help me and determine what exactly we're seeing. My own sighting happened around the summertime of 2008 at around 10 p.m. at night. I had decided to go out for a walk through the woods, all behind my house. I noticed something moving in between the trees at first. I thought it was a deer, but it came closer and stopped abruptly, not far away from me, and then to my dismay, standing up on its hind legs, towering high above me, staring directly at my face. This was not a deer. It was black and had long hair, and even longer legs. It didn't appear to have paws, but rather large hands with claws, completely covered in fur. It was a very dark shade of black, 
Jet black, actually. The face was more human than animal-like. Terrifying by the look of it. It almost kind of reminded me personally of half man, half bear. As ridiculous as that sounds, that's what it reminded me of. The mouth was a little bit larger. Lots of teeth. Very scary. Especially the eyes. This thing stared at me directly for several minutes before I decided to slowly walk away, back inside the house, screaming for my dad. My father comes out running into the yard, thinking somebody was trying to break in, a loaded gun in his hands. He said afterwards, he saw something, something black standing there at the wood line, watching him. The encounter scared me so bad that I've never really returned on the back side of my house, at least not there. I'm not sure if this creature is gone by any other names. I can't exactly say it was a dogman or a Bigfoot, but it's definitely something new and terrifying. I haven't really read much reports on it. My father's now more of a believer than he ever has, especially that night. Now, he tells me there are several other families in our town that live in our country who have had very similar eyewitness accounts of seeing these strange creatures. I guess a lot of people around here also talk about hearing growling noises being made from somewhere around in the woods, since our county is very rural and very, very woodsy. It seems like there's always places here in America that have these kind of sightings going on. This particular creature, we're not sure what it is, has become a very popular subject to talk about over the past year or so. Even, I guess, making it into some episodes of paranormal and true crime shows. It seems like people are starting to believe after seeing hard evidence that's been provided by many researchers. But it's interesting. Not everybody sees them in exactly the same way. There are some definitive similarities between all the accounts, which led me to believe it could be an undiscovered species, as opposed to being something supernatural, like a ghost or a demon, or a cryptid. I've decided that I would rather contact you. I know your expertise is needed when dealing with topics like these. I'm not sure if you've heard of this creature before, or have seen the pictures that have been posted online, but it seems like there's a lot more to the story than we're being told. Some people say it could be the form of an ape, or maybe a Bigfoot-like creature, since I guess there was one sighting here around 1993. Someone also needs to investigate further too. Maybe even get in contact with researchers across the globe who are studying different types of wildlife. My dad mentioned hearing about something with an American zoologist who knows something about the cryptozoology subject. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. He's supposed to be one of the more smarter and well-known scientists, so maybe it's worth a shot for us to contact him. My father also claimed that this black creature was more active during the summer months, when people are out camping, fishing, and hiking, which may explain why there have been more sightings during this time period, rather than other times of year, where not as many people are outside. A lot of people think that this creature may even be something new that is recently brought over from Africa, using the animals that were smuggled into America, or even genetically engineered, by possibly a top-secret government organization. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but it's definitely worth checking out. My mother, very recently, has expressed an interest in trying to find out more info about this subject. She had never mentioned it before. This really surprised me. She's always been pretty skeptical of these things, since they usually never end up being true. Like the recent hoaxes making people think that aliens have landed somewhere in America. She thinks that if we can figure out some solid proof of our own, which will be hard, considering my father and I are the only ones that I know that have seen this thing in our circle of family, then maybe we'll have something significant enough for others to believe us. Maybe you or somebody else in your audience can help us out. It would be great if we could get to the bottom of this creature's origin. Maybe we can help solve a mystery that has been around for way too long. I had an encounter with what I think was a dogman back in 2014. 
I was walking in a very wooded area across from my house. It was late November, so there were no leaves on the trees, no foliage to block my sight. It was about three in the morning, and you could see pretty far in the woods from where I was outside, due to the bright moonlight. I heard branches break into my left, and saw something strange standing there on two legs. That's when it noticed me, and began to run towards me at full speed. My first thoughts were maybe that somebody ran through the woods, possibly on drugs or what. Then, as it got closer, I noticed its head size and defined jawline. This was the head of a dog, or a wolf. It looked directly at me, but did not slow down, and continued to run right past me through the woods. I was terrified. I pulled out my phone, dialing 911, telling them what had just happened. They seemed very uninterested, until I told them more details about the sighting. That's when they accused me of pranking them. I tried to reassure them that this thing was still chasing me and in pursuit of me. They told me they would send somebody to check out the area, but when I arrived home, about 40 minutes later, there were no police and no sign of anything unusual having ever happened. A few years ago, I was driving south, interstate, in my hometown at night. It was close to midnight on a Saturday. I had just gotten off work at a Bass Pro Shop, about an hour or so before that. This was located in Granville, Michigan. It's quiet here for the most part where I live, not much traffic at night. As I was driving, one thing about our interstate though is that it has two lanes going eastbound and westbound for each direction of travel. It's a four-lane highway, but they only ever set up two lanes on either side, but there are four lanes to signify where the other two lanes would be if they were actually put in use. There is always so little traffic traveling at that hour, and you could see pretty far in the distance on both sides of the road, with very little obstructions to block your view as you're driving, which is why when something strange ran out in front of me, Right as I was passing a car traveling in the opposite direction, it first caught my attention. It was night and my vision driving isn't the best. I wasn't going more than 30 miles per hour at most, and I was just about to come up on another vehicle in front of me, which was also going very slow. And then we both see this thing. I know because I saw them react. This four-legged creature running across the fourth lane into my lane. I saw the silhouette in the distance, and then it ran right towards our vehicle. This is how I remember it looking. It was running straight towards our vehicles. Its body, from what I could tell, looked more like a large lion, if that's a silly enough description, right? The head had a large mane around it, very pointy ears, and the head was kind of canine-like, but also seemed reptilian at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. Although the head shape was more visible than the face, there was no eyes or anything visible from where I was driving. It happened all so fast that it disappeared very quickly on the other side. This caused the vehicle in front of me to slam on their brakes. Now, I drove around trying to see if I could find anything, but I couldn't. I even remember telling my brother, who was in the car with me, about it, saying if I ever saw one of those things running around here in real life, I would be done. That thing freaked me out, and it wasn't just some sort of animal. What was it? I hardly believe in Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but this was something else entirely. Like I said, it looked like some sort of large, freakish lion hybrid or something. I don't know. It reminded me of something you'd see on Animal Planet, or maybe National Geographic, or one of those shows where they get into the jungle looking for rare animals. This wasn't found anywhere else in the world except our interstate, that I know of. But my brother, who's actually really big into scary stories, found your channel and directed me to you in hopes that maybe you can kind of solve our problem. What did we see? What kind of creature did we encounter that night? Was this something more or could this have been a hybrid or some sort? Maybe this thing was designed in a lab. But why was it so huge? I just have so many questions with not enough answers. I'm hoping you could help.
This was back in 1999, and I went camping with a few of my close buddies. I know it was on a Friday, because that's when I got off work, and when I went to go meet up with my friends. At the time, we were up in northern Maine, close to the Canadian border, although we had never seen any hard evidence of unusual activity. There have been some pretty weird sightings in the area over the years. The local Native American tribe in the region called this particular creature the Wolf Spirit. It's thought that they may worship him as an ancestor, but nobody really knows for sure. It could just be a story they tell their children to keep them from wandering around at night or something. Whatever the case, this is all taking place up near where my friends live not far from Andre Lake. That site alone, though, has had many alleged sightings of this particular wolf spirit. That's what I'm almost sure of that we saw that day. It had been raining pretty steadily, but it was just beginning to get dark, so we decided to hop in the truck and ride out to a clearing that we had seen on an earlier trip. This was not our first rodeo. We had gone camping multiple times. This spot was way back in the woods, right beside a small stream, thick with trees and brush at all sides. This was not a typical campground spot. This was kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and it would be easy for somebody or something to hide there without ever being spotted by anybody traveling along the road that leads into it. Now, the clearing is about as big as two or three football fields put together. Perhaps even more, if you include the area up near where some of the vehicles were parked. We only had two at that weekend. There's also a dirt road that cuts to the center of it. Not really wide enough for any cars to drive down, but big enough for ATVs or some 4x4s. At the far end of the clearing is a collection of fallen trees, looking something right out of Lord of the Rings. The first thing we did was we got all set up. All four tents were put up and we started a fire. Not too close by, though. You don't want your tent going up in flames if some embers get kicked around by some careless camper or my stupid buddies. Then, we built some makeshift benches using fallen branches, which we stuck in the mud on either side of the fire pit. The things were going great, getting everything set up, until we began hearing strange noises in the woods all around us. The first time we heard it, we just thought it might be a wolf or something. It wasn't until later when I realized how unnatural the sound actually was. It's hard to describe exactly what it sounded like. Almost like somebody choking but groaning. We weren't too off put by it at first, and so we ignored it. Doing our best to set up our tents and stuff. The sounds started getting more frequent. We had kept a Coleman lantern hanging from the top of one of our tents we thought it would help keep the mosquitoes away. We hung it out by the tent, and sometimes we could see shadows moving in strange ways. We began to feel a little creeped out. I think it was around this time we realized someone or something might really be out there messing with us. I didn't have any of my necessary camping gear with me, like flashlights and knives. I was getting worried. My friend just told me to go back to where our cars were parked and get my knife. But I was reluctant to leave. He assured me we'd be fine. My friend and another one of our camping buddies had gone to go get some firewood. They had walked up to the far end of the clearing, where we were pretty confident nothing would bother them. I didn't want to leave them alone, though. But they insisted. I reached the cars and ran quickly over to mine, searching like a madman for my pack. I was just about to give up when I spotted it under the passenger seat. I turned and started jogging back in the direction of my tent. I didn't want to turn around, but I was afraid there was somebody walking right behind me, so close that they might grab me if I didn't pay attention. It was really hard not to look back, but I pushed myself and did what I could, running right into a tree headfirst. I fell to the ground, slid a few feet. My knee was bleeding, and I had some pretty nasty scratches. I picked myself up and made it back to camp. 
We had the supplies we needed, and my friends looked at me funny for running into a tree, but I explained to them that I swore something or someone was following me. The two friends of mine who had gone to get firewood at this point had come back, and while I was gone, they seemed pretty freaked. They said they could have sworn that something large was stalking them in the trees while they were gathering firewood. They were both kind of white. We stayed up for a while longer, but at some point, ultimately decided to put the fire out, make sure all of the flashlights we had were charged before going to bed. This was the start of a very long night. After gathering in our tents, we agreed to keep the lanterns and flashlights on a high setting, just in case. My tent was closest to the cars, about 200 feet away. We wanted to make sure that nobody or nothing would come in the camp, or if someone or something did, we could see them. I laid down in my sleeping bag, turned on my flashlight, which I had positioned so that it would shine up towards the top of the tent, onto the ceiling. My friend began talking about his scouting days in high school, and how he used to camp a lot, talk to his friends about how he believed in ghosts and all that paranormal stuff. The whole time, I was trying to listen, but also keep my eyes on the woodland canopy and the woods in general. My friend began talking about how when he had a nightmare, that there was actually this werewolf stalking him to the forest while he was camping. He said that after that, he realized how much stories like that actually really scared him. And I remember my heart skipped a beat when he said that. I had to remind him about the time he swore a mountain lion was stalking us and displayed his nightmare. A noise around us broke the silence and I shushed him. We were looking at each other, wide-eyed, as we could hear something big moving around, coming out of the wood line and close to our camp. It stopped for a moment, and then we all heard this low grunting noise. More movement, stopping. More movement, stopping. Whatever this was, or whoever it was, had to have been huge. Then, again, the sound stopped. We remained staring at each other, in complete fear, thinking some psycho is out there and is going to kill us. Then, out of nowhere, we hear this large piece of wood get thrown and smashed up against another tree. We all about jumped out of our sleeping bags, now completely terrified. Then, we start hearing more strange noises just outside the bounds of our camp. It sounded like a low growling, angry growling, and we were so scared that we shut off our lights. When that happened, I swear, it was like an invitation for this thing to start walking into our campsite. We could hear these large footsteps, long, slow steps, one by one. It seemed as though whatever was walking around, maybe 10 feet from our tent, was big enough to make the ground shake with each step. These noises were coming closer and closer. Then we heard a loud whoosh noise. It was very loud. It almost hurt my ears. I told my friends that I was just going to run fast, as fast as I could for the car. They should do whatever they wanted. They said okay, and they may not follow me. I told them it was their choice, but we had to get out of there. After that, the noises stopped, and it became quiet again, like whoever or whatever it was was listening intently to us talking back and forth. I made a break for it. I jumped up, unzipped the tent, and just ran full on towards the car. I ran in the dark, not even taking my flashlight with me. I figured I would have died if I left it on. I get to the driver's side door, unlocked it, and instantly, the headlights come on and illuminate something that looked like it came from hell. About 150 feet away, coming after me in the dark, directly in front of the vehicle, was this creature that was now fully illuminated by the headlights. It looked like a werewolf if I'd ever seen one, but it also kind of resembled a baboon too. It was hideous, and it had these yellow glowing eyes. It turned and lifted up its arm to shield its face from the light. I panicked, 
jumped in the car, turning it on all the way, and I start honking at this thing. It slowly lowered its arm, and this thing was pissed, so it turned and ran off into the woods on the side. I roll the window down, and I start yelling at my friends, The coast is clear. Get in the car now. We need to leave. They all listen, surprisingly, and come barreling out of the tents, running straight for me, terrified. After a few more seconds, they jump in and just literally pile in the car. We floor it, and we peel out of there as fast as possible, leaving behind our other tents, the other vehicles, all of our supplies. None of that mattered in that moment. And now, we were going a good 60 miles an hour, and we could see this thing from the rear start to chase after our vehicle. It ran really strange, very strange. It ran on two legs, but it kind of dangled and wobbled. It started catching up to us, and now we were all screaming. That's when one of my friends yelled out that there's more of them coming out of the trees. More began accumulating and running after our vehicle. I think at some point or another, we lost them, but we were all scared beyond what normal fear is like. I mentioned at the beginning of this story about how some of us believe it's the wolf spirits that the natives around the area have talked about for a long time. They supposedly guard the whole area. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. I just know that it's the most terrifying experience of my life. I can't get it out of my head. I'm still recovering from the shock of it all. I have never been so scared before. I am a believer that there may be other creatures out there like this that are still undiscovered. There's so many places here in the US where it could be and nobody knows about it. Maybe we'll never know if those spirits were really protecting us or if they would have killed us that night out of fear to protect their territory from intruders who may threaten their food. Following the Native American religions, they say that some of these spirits like skinwalkers and such. They're here to protect the territory, but others, like the skunk ape, are out to kill. Some even believe that there are creatures like the dogman, who has no place. Whatever they were, or whatever they are, it's just one of those experiences we'll never forget. I say, we probably got lucky, and these things chased us off. We were so scared by this event that we actually never went back and grabbed our equipment. I mean, we went back and grabbed our vehicles, don't get me wrong, but we were too scared to set foot down in that clearing and grab our tents. Even though that was 21 years since this happened, by then, me and my buddies, the fear was so real, you could taste it. It was like a fear you get when you watch a scary movie, and then from out of nowhere, it hits you with these chills. It's that same tumultuous feeling. I'm positive that to this day, Whatever we encountered on that night in 99 did not want us there. That sense of being threatened by these creatures is what really sticks out. For the record, nobody else ever went back out there after this had happened. And I've pondered for a long time about whether I should have shared this story. I'm not sure why or what made me finally decide to come forward and let people know that these creatures are still around. And maybe I want people to know about this so they won't go looking for them or try to discover them. Whatever the case may be, I'm glad that I told my story. Maybe it will help somebody else out there who has seen or heard about these creatures and are too scared to say anything due to ridicule. The reason why there's no names mentioned between me and my buddies is again, I really don't want to be ridiculed or have anybody come looking for us. That was the scariest day of my life. I pray that nobody has an experience like this Sorry again for the long story, but I thought it was important to share my piece. When I was eight years old, my parents used to own a large piece of land that they inherited from my father's side of the family. It was sold shortly after this incident. The land, or the back half, was filled with trees, lots of oak, fir, and just general thick brush. It was untamed wilderness. I remember my parents saying it was never a place you would want to go. One beautiful fall morning, I decided to run down the path that led from our backyard over and into this area. 
I had done this countless times before, but my parents always warned me about going too far in there. We had coyotes and mountain lions, and due to it being so thick and brush and dense, it wasn't exactly safe for an eight-year-old boy. Anyway, for some reason, I thought nothing of it. I ran over across the field along a path far from where our house was and up to around a cluster of trees, further than I'd ever gone before, untouched by anyone ever except for my family. I was then startled instantly by this intense scream coming out of nowhere right about at my nine o'clock. I froze. I didn't know what to do or where it came from. The whole area was a deafening silence. Nothing moved. No animals or nature were making noises, which is strange for being in the middle of nowhere, an untamed forest stretching across several acres. I slowly started moving towards the cluster of these untouched trees ahead of me, and once again, I heard another scream, and it sounded exactly like the first one, only this one was louder. I could feel this terrible feeling coming over me. It was a fear that you could never imagine. Something was out there with me. I wasn't alone. I was being watched by someone or something, and I began to move faster towards the untouched trees as I thought it would be better to hide there. When I got to this cluster of trees, I heard it again, but this time, there were other noises with it. Falling branches, rustling, breaking. Whatever was out there was getting closer to me, and it sounded like whatever it was was moving from tree to tree following me. I had no idea what to do, so I slowly backed away from the untouched trees, but not before it happened again. This time, the scream lasted for a good five seconds, and my whole body sunk in defeat as I realized that there was nothing I could do to stop whatever animal this was from ultimately hurting me. This wasn't a deer. This wasn't anything that I knew of from the traditional animal kingdom. I needed to get out of here, and I needed to act fast. No matter how much I wanted to, my legs would not move. The screaming stopped as quick as it started. It was dead silent, and I heard heavy footsteps moving quickly through the brush and towards me. Instantly, I fell over in fear, just waiting for whatever this thing was to make its way over to me. Once it got close enough, I could hear the sound of its heavy breathing, which was heavy and erratic, as something went wrong. It sounded like a mix between a horse, a bear, and a dog. Maybe it was just an old sick animal that had somehow gotten hurt, and maybe managed to survive out here. All these thoughts rushing through my head to try and explain away what it was that I might be experiencing but I didn't know. I tried my best to pull myself up and ran as fast as I could. I made it over the fence and back to my house, nearly tripping and falling all along the way. Imagine that, it being only eight years of age, though I was very frightened by whatever large animal was coming after me. It sounded like I had made it angry, hence why it was coming at me so hard. As soon as I got back into the house, I told my father exactly what I was freaking out about. And he looked at me extremely strange. It tells me there's nobody out there. It's all private property. I must just be hearing things. I explained to him, even at eight years old, I told him over there that there was some large animal chasing me and that it seemed to be upright on two legs. I begged him to go look, but of course he wouldn't even entertain it. I had convinced myself there was nothing out in the woods that night. Now, flash forward to about a year later, and we had moved. I think at some point or another, my own father had an encounter with something like I did, because during the winter, for a short while, while I went to go spend some time away with my grandparents, he seemed different afterwards. He stopped going outside by a shed, which bordered the thickness of the land. He quit taking me out there, back in the winter to go play. Sometimes, I think he saw something, but it seems that he was eager to get us to move out of there afterwards. We ended up actually moving that spring, and even to this day, my father refuses to talk about it and acts like that story of mine I just shared never happened. <laughs>